we all need to get cool backgrounds though, like Jeff. Okay, hey, welcome to the Federation X podcast. My name is Grayson. Joining me today, Jason Storm and Genocide Jason Miller. And there's a chance we will be joined by the birthday celebrating Max Entropy. There's also a chance he has swerved us, lied, and will not show up, which is perfectly fine because the theme of tonight's event is the Swerve cast. We are going to spend tonight talking about swerves, the ones we've done, the ones we've watched, the ones we've liked. We're also going to talk about the role of the Swerve in what we do, the game we play, and in actual wrestling, uh, which is not nearly as interesting as what we do, but certainly an inspiration source. So, before I go, I should make this super clear. Bill is currently messaging me to see if I can pull him in early so that he can make sure his camera and everything is working. He's missed the boat on that one. So, so we'll see if he figures out where he's supposed to go in order to connect to get on or not. So Hopefully he's already he's drunk. And realizes we sent him a message on Discord so he could get in here. <laughs> yeah, can you pull me in early when it's already late? That means he's already toasted. He actually, he sent it to me five minutes ago. I was just busy talking to you guys. So <laughs> for him. Um, before we do that, though, one of the things I want to do, I want to make sure we continue to give some pretty good shout outs as people are showing up, new characters are being played. And so uh, we would be remiss if we did not comment on the return of uh, Angelica playing her new character, Angelique. So I know big fans. Where did this, where this kid I, come from? What's that? Where'd this kid come from? Hey, listen, if I had a child, I wouldn't expose it to you guys either. So it's entirely possible during one of Angelica's times away from the sport that she had a kid and was wise enough to be like, hell no, I'm not telling any of them I have a kid. To me, that that's the smartest thing she could possibly do. Yeah, excess is, you know, always liable to be, be around. Well, I, for one, am happy. I'm happy she's back. I mean, hell, that, you know, between Max and Faith, that's just an expanding member of the Emerson Max Entropy family thing dynamic. So. Yeah. Well, it's listen, really that's, it's, it's a growing family. It's a pretty big one. Yeah. Um, it is. Let, let's also, I, I mean, I know we kind of got the dabble before, but we've kind of seen a more in, in force return for. Um, our father and Samite. Yep. And we saw the return, and I can't be understated, of Man of War. You think we can get him on a podcast? So, you know, we'll see. Uh, my, I like our chances with Man of War. I've been chasing Ryan Scott, but that guy's just being a dick about it. So, well, when, Man of, when I saw Mano on the board, I'm not going to lie, I marked out a little bit. And we all know Storm doesn't mark out much, but I marked out a little bit. Yeah. Mano's he mark out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the king of marking out. Uh, also, I was encouraged that I would point out it was a big deal the day that Tom Brady joined Federation X. No, no, no. The real no. Lux, no. That fake Tom Brady needs to go somewhere else. So, uh, in an effort to counteract Miller's dead air presence. I'm going to dive right into the topic and <coughs> get going. And while I'm going, hopefully Bill, who's already been on the live stream, has now gone to Discord and has figured out how to get his ass in here. And while he's doing that, let's let's start with a couple of questions before we really dive into the swerve side of the topic. Hey guys, what's your favorite angle going on the board right now? Uh, has has to be over Celeria. So it's it's taking over everything. It uh, it's a little like the COVID. It's lingering. It it's not going away as quickly as you might there's have thought. There's different strains. There's the the no celeria and there's the bonerized and. Well, the no celeria is kind of the natural inoculation to over celeria. Right. You get that nice middle of the road, the appropriate amount of celeria. Got to keep it. Keep it in the middle well, there. I like the I, I like the overcelleria, but if I had to pick one, and you know, my brother is the one who loves Tony Robes. Me, eh, whatever. But 
I give Tony credit where credit is due. I like his, I like his, uh, his non-winning streak. I hope he remedies that soon, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I'm still out on the guy. I'm not sure whether I like him or not. I know my brother loves him, but. We're, we're sitting here with his, his opponent from this week. I, I mean, I got to think you got to feel for whether or not this is the week he ba- breaks the streak. What, what do you think? Uh, it lo- looks good for Tony. <laughs> Somebody tanked on the sim. Got it. All right. Um, Got to gotta throw him a bone. He's floundering, you know. Maybe it has something like to do with that. his name. I just so. Um, th- you guys been following the card from this week? Is there a match that you liked best? One that that so far you've been super entertained with? I'm I'm saving my sluts for Sunday. I need material. Um, I've, I've, I've been looking, I've been looking at quite a few of them. Um, um, I'm trying to, my brain doesn't function sometimes, so forgive me, but, uh, Dawson's match. I like what's going on there. Yeah. Um, Mano, even though it's not super hitting on all cylinders, but I mean, it's Mano, it's Ed. I mean, come on. Mano, it's Ed, it's Valentine and it's Valentine. How can you, I mean, seriously, Valentine. Right, even though he looks like me, but whatever. Um, like, uh, well, I mean, he's a little more out of shape, a little more of a skullet, a little less of the mullet. I mean, I like the uh, I like the Max Ernest match till it went off the rails. It was only a matter of time. Did that start on the rails. It started. I well, don't know what happened to it. Completely was close to the rails from the from the get go. I don't know whose idea that was either, but it's terrible. <laughs> I think one of the things that I thought was most entertaining, and I've seen a couple of moments of entertainment, and and there were a couple, uh, certainly in a match with Axel Hendricks that I laughed out loud, but one of the things that I was really entertained by was the announced booth for the Tony Robes in person people's match, having three guys competing for who loved Tony the most was that to was, me a pretty yeah. good laugh. That was good too, yeah. Yeah. Definite entertainment value there. Carnage turning into acid ed is good stuff. It's the best version of Carnage. Never been better. No yeah. bias, right? None at all. None whatsoever. I just, <laughs> I, I, first of all, when you look at Carnage's picture, do you not think this is who he should be? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. Um. Before we dive into our topic and really start sinking our teeth into swerves, uh, let's continue to do what we've done in the past. Uh, it, it, so far, we've had a pretty good track record. So name one possible return that you would like to see light up the boards. Well, I, I mean, my, my given would be my tag team partner, Techno. I mean, that to me, that's a techno would be obviously my first pick because you know, hey, tag team partner, um, or maybe uh, maybe uh, somebody in the likes of Eve Riley, Nate Daniels, something like that. I think I mentioned that last time. I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. I would uh, emissary. Oh yeah, good one. Emissary is a great choice. Bring yes. along his sidekick. Little amp too. Man, do I miss doing that? And man, did amp hate it. <laughs> yeah, he did. I, uh, you know, there's a couple on my list, but one of them is currently watching and not playing. And I, I know some of the reasons why, but it drives me nuts. I really feel like we're a better fed when Johnny Excess is playing. Oh, I think he's got static disease. He just got fat and lazy. Oh, it's it's an awful thing. He is definitely. I know how much time he spends writing a post. He could be semi-active, just pooping. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's all he does when he's writing posts is poop. Yeah, that sounds about right. Eat more Mexican and get active. <laughs> Come on, Price. Act like you're a grown-up. Stop playing with your kids. Yeah, kids will be around forever. We won't. Look at us. We're all one foot in a box already. 
think you were going to say all gray hairs, but I mean, Gino doesn't have any hair, so. Well. Oh, wait. Oh. All right, I take it all back. You have a wonderful mane. It's <laughs> That's terrible. All right. So we're going to dive in. Uh, this, credit where it's due, what, part of this conversation about today's topic really came from my conversation with Mav last week and him hit me up afterwards and going, I have so many ideas for things we can talk about. And one of the things he said is like, we could just do a whole podcast. And he specifically said like, how about me? How about you? How about Gino? Let's do a podcast about swerves. <coughs> so let's round that out. Let's do a, a four man round table on that. And let's invite entropy because I think, you know, he's got a background and some pretty good ones as well. It, to me, it is a, piece of our game that you know is often a high point of some of the stories we remember some of the eras are kind of defined by them as big moments and but also it's a part of how we tell stories it's part of, about how the wrestling world tells story and so i broke it out for us and said let's start a little nostalgically or reflectively and then let's deal with um let's deal with it as, as the story component goes. So um, let's, let's start, and we're gonna do this in reverse. Normally what I do is just ask people about their stuff. When I ask now, they're gonna answer about other people. And you can even answer about Bill, even though he stood us up and didn't show up. Um, I, I, got, I got some good lines from Bill, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, is so, he still watching or? Yeah, he's just watching and pretending like he doesn't know and that we didn't tell him way early today that the, the way to get in was going to be on Discord. And poor me, they're swerving me. But, you know, he's clearly the one swerving us. And, and it's his birthday, so he's allowed to. If you want to pull a birthday swerve, everybody's entitled to a birthday swerve. Not Max. Mm -hmm. it's, like a, it's like a free burger. At That's right. Ed Robin. Right. Mac, uh, get your ass on here now. Not yesterday, now. So what swerve are the others on here uh, best known for in your mind? Who wants to go first? Um, and you don't have to tell everybody. If you've got just one in your head, let's go with that one, and we'll just kind of bounce it around. Actually, I... I I won't say that – I can't say that they're the best of all time, obviously, because I – like I told Jeff when we got on earlier, um, I can't even remember three-quarters of them. But I can remember a few. Uh, one that I definitely remember really well uh, for Max because he was the perpetrator of said swerve. And I can already see – Jeff knows where I'm going with this one. We've talked about it already. I know we have, but it, it, it's the one I remember him doing the most, the one that got, because they got us a lot of heat. And Max, one of his better swords was the corporate America thing. And then, um, and the, as far as Gino's concerned, um, even though I was slightly involved in it, it was more so his brainchild than mine was the, uh, the Gino is coming back in NGPW where uh, he came in and I basically just handed him the keys to the kingdom the moment he walked through the door. And that pissed everybody off in character and some people out of character, but it really, it propelled the, the activity like off the, off the charts right after we did that. And, and there was a lot of other stuff that was in, intermixed in that too, but I'll let. Yeah. I, I came in at a weird time. I missed all the Maverick and Kitty stuff. I missed the, the corporate America swerve and I just come in, Hey guys, let's play wrestling. And, X is like it's it's a little different. There's there's some stuff going on, and he was he was always kind of secretive about it, probably because he didn't want to give me ammo. To <laughs> uh, and yeah, dead air. Do you <laughs> do you have some options specific to to other people, Gino, that you think about and go, well, like for swerves, I think about this for you or this moment. Uh, I always like the way that Max Entropy, he swerved Angelica by proposing to her and then like becoming a boner instead. I was thought like, hey, I'm going to propose to you and then I'm going to run around and touch tips with other dudes. 
Yeah. I just thought it was great. Best work. Oh, God. That's hilarious. Uh, uh, what about Storm? Like, wow, who didn't he swerve? Me, I guess. <laughs> I guess the one that really stands out was the Instant Karma initiative. Right. Same same thought I had. Yeah, just, oh, he, he just crushed little Eve. <laughs> and Chance and Rude. <laughs> yeah, but. Eve took the brunt of it, yes. Eve yeah. took the worst beating of all of them, yeah. The, they were big boys. They weren't, um, calling, you, they weren't calling you Uncle Jason. And <laughs> right. That got her. That's true. Right. That got her. I forgot about the Uncle Jason thing. <laughs> Uncle Jason. <laughs> Art felt. We can count on him. Kick to the face. To thine own self be true. That's <laughs> absolutely true. Now, I think one of the things that bounced around, and I, you know, Miller begged me to say, hey, so I think your best swerving days was before I knew you, which might have been true. Uh, I don't know that I did a ton of swerves. I mean, by the time that you guys got to FedEx, I think a, a lot of my big swerves were done. And to be fair, most- Except for the ones I talked to you into. Well, that's- most of my big swerves were um, getting other people to swerve their partners and join me in a stable or an angle or a thing. Like most of my swerves were getting other people to do that. I, I mean, except getting a father to swerve his son, but that was just totally a different story altogether. Yeah, like I got a steroid head to swerve Taz. And the, that was a pretty big tag team back in the end of did season. You, did, did any of your swerves break up a tag team? Yeah, it was steroid head and Taz. Yeah. He any swerved. other ones? Any of them? So uh, I don't know if you count. First I, of I, all, I wrote all my swerves down here on them. Yeah, day. first of all, you yeah. swerved rude. <laughs> pretty well in the network. <laughs> we swerved Chance, Eve, and Rude all at once. Rude wanted out, so we kicked Chance out and made Eve and Rude stay in. <laughs> <laughs> he was not pleased. <laughs> yeah, it was clear, you know, Rude was for day, you know, guys, I just want to, this doesn't work for me, so call the bit me. Clearly, someone doesn't want to be here. Right. By chance. <laughs> it was so good. Poor chance. Oh, God. Oh. She, she was being especially obnoxious at that time, though. Which was, I don't know yeah. if you can even really call it a swerve either, but Nate Daniels and Homicide were the number one contenders for our tag team titles for a while. And we convinced them that some made up belts were that better than a title tag shot. Team excitement. <laughs> and we got them to walk around with those belts and talk about making other people challenge them and forget that they were supposed to get a they, title they shot. They with defended us. them. And... I mean, I don't know that that really counts as a swerve, but it's pretty close and it was pretty fun. The pseudo uh, swerve. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, Storm, you were going to say something while uh, while we well, started. I thought, you know, we were talking about Max and we were talking about Gino, but uh, one of the ones that I remember, yeah, and for me, I thought it was kind of a swerve, uh, was uh, uh, Legion right. when we did when we did Legion because it was all it was you and me and Rude, um, Lars, Lars, yeah, Lars, all under masks. Oh, by the what, way, Stan Daniels Lasher? joined it late, but was really good in it. Lasher, yeah, Lasher, yeah, yeah, Stan. Da and um, I mean, technically, I mean that was here yeah, because you you came to me with that one, so that was you that orchestrated that one. And yeah. I thought that I thought that I thought the whole Legion thing played out really well, although technically I get to count it as two swerves because I swerved death. <laughs> you weren't alone. <laughs> that was part of the story, right? Well, I was like really dead, though. I thought I don't know. I couldn't remember how we told it, but yeah, 
so I think some of the ones that I've been involved with have been like the, the you know, the mask remove type of swerve where nobody knows for sure who it is until the mask comes off or the surprise, you know, referee or the surprise return in a match kind of like they're fun ones. But my first one was like my very first one, um, Rev Future was involved. It was way back in the early days of Slam for me. When I came in, he was in a stable with our father, a guy named Big Papa. They had a couple of other guys in the stable. And I feuded with him for a while and, and convinced him to swerve the stable and join me. And it was the first one. And again, like it wasn't really me swerving, but it was my swerve. And when he swerved the table and joined me, I remember the rest of the stable were pissed. <laughs> like, pissed. Those are always fun. Yeah. I, got a, I got Storm to swerve a tag team partner once. Easiest swerve of my life. Did you tell him to swerve Alan Scott? Because he did that on like day two. It, was, it doesn't count as a swerve if you're not really friends yet. Okay, first of all, I'm here to defend myself, okay? Alan's not, number one. Number two, Alan and I were a tag team for a month, and I carried him to the tag team titles in our first match. Yeah, I'd believe that if I thought you could beat him, but I don't, so. <laughs> yeah, no, we were a tag team for about a month. And you know something? And if you remember, I came and I told you. You know, I never tell anybody I'm going to do stuff. And I was like, dude. This opportunity is too good. I can't not do it. Um, anyway, Storm Storm was tagging with Chevy at one point. So oh. that was the easiest sell on I was the gonna world. Say, that could not have been a hard sell. Like you should <laughs> work a good idea. Hey, do you want to see? Yeah, I do. Cool. How how many times did I swerve Chevy? How many times I don't I lost count, but yeah, he's right. He was like, hey, uh, I have this idea about chefs. What do you say you swear? And I was like, okay. He didn't even get the word swear about it. I was just like, yeah, okay. So we, we, we kind of bounced into a couple of topics there. Let me ask you this. Uh, you know, think of Max. He certainly has some alts. You think of Storm, there's some alts involved. You think of Genocide, there are some alts. All of them Miller clones of some sort. They are. Um, I'm sorry. Which of their characters are most likely to swerve? So it's easy for you, right? Like Storm is clearly the most likely to swerve. Clearly. Yeah. He made a reputation on it. Right. No, I'm, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> That's an easy answer. <laughs> yeah, that one's a slam dunk. So what's the answer for Bill? Is it Max? Is it... Yeah, I think it would be Max. I don't remember Deke doing a lot of swerving. Yeah, I don't Dark Knight, I don't remember Dark Knight doing it, but Max, I mean, just look at I mean, just look at the character of Max. I mean, Max would swerve himself waking up in the morning because you just he's the dude's mental, you know. So right. I mean, if anybody's gonna throw caution to the wind, of all his characters, it's definitely Max. Uh Yours is clearly Dick. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. It might yeah, be right. I would agree with that too, because Ed's definitely not the kind of Ed. Ed would put yeah, it, a swerve, just punch it in you in the face. face. Alan's too honest to swerve. Yeah, that's right. And Joe's too goody two shoes. And night. Could you imagine the whole? Efed world would come to a grinding halt if Nighthawk swerved anybody. So. Nighthawk might actually be my character that's responsible for the most swerves. Really? The, the character that most often somebody has said like, hey, I was thinking I was going to take this turn or, or, or like turn my character. And Nighthawk is the impetus around which the character either goes bad or goes good. It's probably the one with responsible or tied to the most swerves. And it clearly was the one that I went to Rev Future and was like, hey, 
I mean, you don't seem like a bad guy. What are you doing in a heel stable? I, I think it's time for you to, you know, make the move. And he was like, it is time. That's it. You know what, dude? You bring up a good point because, and again, this could be a, uh, uh oh, what? Oh, is uh, that, is that oh! What you're doing, man? <laughs> You've been swerved, bitch. <laughs> Bill's in the house. Oh, Bill swerved his own no show. No, no, your intentional uh, <clears throat> no show got swerved by someone who uh, could link me in. What do you mean? <laughs> You're in the group where we posted it. No, not until about 30 seconds ago. He was in the group. Bullshit. <laughs> Ask him. I'm, I'm actually opening it to look because I made it intentionally so that I could get you in. No, he just added me. Like, anyway, who's, yeah. Dick. Who's the third one I added then? Oh, did I add Kansas instead you of you? Kansas. Oh, that was an accident. Hi, Billy. <laughs> so what I oh. missed while I was going, what the fuck? Now you know what you got for your birthday. Oh, yeah. I was clear. I was like, I earned this one. Free swerves for everybody. One. It's Bill's birthday. Swerves all around. I'm not singing happy birthday. I'm just telling you that now. No, I just... no if you did, I'd leave. <laughs> we, we get him enough martinis, he'll sing it for us. <laughs> I got enough garnishes for two more. There you go. So where are hey. we at? So we were just talking about the, the swerves that people are best known for. But in the reverse, you don't get to talk about your own. You have to talk about one of the rest of us. Ooh. I talked about how you swerved Jelly by uh, proposing to him and becoming a boner. Yeah, that was a bad swerve. <laughs> Great swerve, bad swerve, not sure which. And I threw you under the bus we again in corporate America, so. Yeah, well, that's uh, Tim's best swerve, honestly. <laughs> Tim just keeps getting thrown on this one. That's pretty good. Hey, it was his idea. I was the asshole that did it. And uh, I want to point out one thing, though. It was the last swerve I ever did. Absolute last. Huh. He's yeah. not wrong. I promised you I would never do it again. And I haven't. I mean, until tonight. <laughs> no, I think we decided you stupid, were. Which is, the que which is the real one. Swerve or stupid. I think one of the best ones uh, <laughs> was uh, Gino trying to swerve an inactive. I did it. <laughs> That's all you can do. I mean, you swerve Hank Hooligan. Ew, count it, Naka. That wasn't a swerve. No, for as long as you carried it on. You you did you did kind of ride that one to death. <laughs> it was good, but you you kind of rode it a couple of weeks too long. No, that's what made it work. Yeah, it was, it was for about two weeks. Then for about two months, it got old. But and then when it I'm came still back. Doing it four or five months later, <laughs> that's the bit. It's uh, that's why it worked. If you don't take it through the valley of no longer funny to the other side where it becomes funny again, you've wasted your effort. Exactly. And all you have to do is come out. You know who I'm out here to talk to, you know, because I'm feuding with people too. But then I'd rather feud with Hank Hooligan instead of you. <laughs> and, and, and Bill's making faces like he doesn't know this from being a boner. It was funny for about two days, and then it got unfunny for a long time. <laughs> and yet somehow it came out the other side and got funny again. The, the unfunny stretch is called Empire. Right. Oh, no, that was the best part. <laughs> oh. and, now, and now, thank God, you can't uh, access that without a login. Yeah, oh we, my God. Best. we put that back behind the uh, back behind the window. You mean the curtain of deniability? Yeah, I I, I actually can't. Uh, so, is there a particular swerve that you think of when you think Storm? Or <coughs> any, my character, like I know that Gino says, like Dick is the one who swerves more people than anybody else. Well, I mean, hell, you, Dick swerved his own bed to go back to wrestle. Okay, to I was digging fair. through the archives, found that one. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had so much butt hurt rolling when you said, yeah, fuck uh, it. I'm going back. 
And do you know who prompted that? Not me. Genocide. Oh, so you had the perfect setup. Yeah, he did the background either. work to make that happen. He went and he was oh. like, because I was like, screw you guys. I'm uh, in him. F you guys. And he's like, well, you cannot play. So he reached out to Titus to say, what are the odds? And Titus was like, 100%. And he was like, well, let's do this. And I'm like, well, if we're doing this, we're you really. You know how that actually came about was Dice came over for the King of Wrestling. And uh, I pointed and out. how to credit Dice with one of our great moments. Well, no, no, no. I pointed out how all the FedEx titles were on the line, but he was carrying a show title in. Why don't you put it on the line? So I became the show whatever champion in the show King of Wrestling. Or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like the secondary tier. So that was my end with show. And I think I went over and defended it once. And <laughs> so I just do bag DQ ending. Can we just, let's take a moment. We've given him enough love. He's due for a sucker punch. Can we agree that while uh, Chris was a good commissioner, he couldn't name a title to save his life? We just let's just throw him under the bus, right? The showstopper. Shut up. Do better. I'm sure. I'm sure my brother would disagree since he loves him so much. But I, I'm with you guys. That was terrible. Terrible. Yeah, there were quite right. a few that were just. They were kind of um, cringy. Some people might say the same thing about Federation X's obsession with X, like it's 2002. Well, in 2002, when we created the titles, <laughs> that's how it was. Everything's extreme, XXX. <laughs> oh, um, of course. You gotta love, you know, it's you're doing a good job when somebody's typing in all caps on the live stream. <laughs> Chris is losing it. Uh-oh, I gotta see this. Oh. Hey, it's okay, Rob. My, my brother loves you. I don't, but he does. Don't be mad, Titus. Don't be mad. <laughs> he, he didn't name those. <laughs> oh, God. Now, okay, how about we get back to the swerves? Some of the best yeah. swerves weren't individual plays. They were whole stables. Right. Like back in the slam, we'd have, like, you know, hundreds of other writers, so you could actually orchestrate some shit. Yes. So do you have one in mind that you're thinking of? Like, hey, this was a big one? Well, it was a big one, but it actually imploded. It was when the uh, proof went to swerve. Uh, basically, we, we split in two with the proof and the soldiers of fortune. And it, for some stupid reason, the guild was involved with this, and it just <laughs> backfired. But I was just going through all these emails. We're talking from like, 99 and I'm trying to figure these out out of context. Going, well, I knew this thing imploded, but what the fuck happened here? Every time you do like a fake split with the stable, they never quite get back together. Again. No, it's true, right? You know, That's exactly. True. We did I a did couple that of those. To, uh, the NC, I left to go swerve. I got into an extreme machine. And I convinced Dog Ox to swerve Cyberpunk. And I think it just happened because cyberpunk was like quitting and retiring or whatever. And I'm, they talked to me, yeah, let's you know, let him swerve me. You know, I thought it happened a little too easy, but never quite made it back to the stable for never, never happened. So in excess never came home. I, uh, I have to confess, I think in, in the slam, I did a pretty terrible one to Bruce. Uh, we were going to create alts and play under a commissioner that wasn't very good. So I said to him, here's what we'll do. You go in and you start playing and, and kind of dropping hints that your partner's coming. And then I'll come in and I'll create an alt, but it'll clearly be Ed. And he was like, awesome, let's do it. So we got like 10 days in. He's like, hey, when do you arrive? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was not pleased. <laughs> I can imagine. He was not pleased at that at all. Um, Did anything hey, come of it? 
Did you guys feud or anything? Or uh, no, we so our feud wasn't Ed. Ed and Digsy were always tight. Our feud was Hawk and Digsy, and we did that uh, in uh, one of Lars' feds. I can't remember. Might have been CCW. Um. So, is there a character that the alts on here wouldn't swerve? And you, can't answer for, you can't answer for yourself. You got to answer for everybody. Like, I don't think Alan would swerve Gino, all right? By the way, I 100% okay. Gino would swerve Alan. Just so we're all clear about this. No, you haven't figured it out. At some point, you started coming to me with ideas for Gino. You started stealing them? Like, maybe the swerve here is I just never swerve him. And just glom off his heat forever. That's, well, you the swerve. <laughs> that's, that's not a swerve. Right. I knew you were riding my heat. That's okay. No, but the swerve is that I'm I'm just never gonna swerve and just keep keep taking it. You you say you that right? me. You, don't, you don't have to play with Alan, but <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't. So who else? Who else is in that scenario? Who doesn't get swerved? Like. Uh, I oh. know because Storm has told me repeatedly, Storm won't swerve Gino. Yet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stuck in my throat. <laughs> I mean, he has to be around first, but you know. Well, but no, I have never swerved Gino. Well, Marlo swerved me, so. Let's uh, let's appreciate the beauty of Marlo swerving people. Yes. Let's yeah. appreciate the the antiseptic beauty of you got led down the garden path by the fucking businessman and he was still able to red tape your ass in oh yeah I've got Listen, he uh he's so good at selling stuff that it's easy to follow him and if he wanted to be like it's all a setup he could pretty much pick his shot whenever he wants yeah but then i i, I just sold it that's all i did <laughs> like that is what you're supposed to do when you get swerved. We'll get to that topic. Um, so, I got anybody think you without really doing it himself? Does so anybody gotta, think that there's a character that Max fourth won't wall swerve you? I'm sorry. Wait, what's no. that? No. Does anybody Max think there's a anybody. character that Max won't swerve? Max will swerve anybody. Max hasn't swerved anyone in 14 fucking years. No, 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 no. It's not. No, no. He didn't say anything about if he's done it, but would he? Max would yeah. swerve anybody. Yeah, let's, let's be clear. If, if Bill's telling you he hasn't swerved in 14 years, that's part of the swerve that's coming. Uh, I don't know. There's that's, a that's weird. That's the swerve. That was my best move. And I there... gave it up for nothing. There's a weird boner thing going on. I don't think. So, so I Tim thinks he won't swerve another boat. I think I think guys like Eliezer and Ed are guys that you can swerve and not feel like you're burning a bridge. So I I don't see that as a no fly zone. I think if you swerve DTP and ran an angle, they they could work it back out down the road. So I don't There's think that the other way isn't going to happen. That, that the prophet's not going to pull a swerve out of his back pocket. Right, I mean, he's been serious. That's. Exactly. And Max right. has to been. Um, yeah, real quick. Sure. Um, two things real quick. One, I don't think Joe Power would swerve anybody because he's Joe. So, I mean, he wouldn't Fair. swerve anybody. He's too good. But speaking of good, and I meant to make this point just before Bill joined us, uh, when you were talking about Nighthawk, is that one thing, and I don't know if this is going to spawn a whole other subject. I'm not trying to, but – Something nobody takes into account, including myself, because all my swerves are Healy swerves. That's like everybody else. You can swerve and be a face. Yes. You can take that heel character out of that heel stable by doing a face swerve. These right. are possible, but very, very, very rarely seen. You're not the bad guy if you turn to doing the good thing. And that's the swerve, is that you're not the bad guy anymore. There and by go. the way... Uh, Hawk got Rev Future to do that, and Rev got our father to do it. Yep. Ooh. Which is why I brought that up. <laughs> right. And so there have been a few of those, but you're right. They're not that common. 
They are not. I mean, because we're, we're, I mean, in the game we're in right now, I mean, even not even the game we're in right now, the game I was in with you guys, 2013, 2014, faces are hard to come by. Because let's be honest, and I've said this before, you have more fun. The heel might get it in the end, but it's way more fun being a bad guy than it is a good guy. Well, it's, it's also that the heel controls the story. The face reacts to the story. And so yeah. the story doesn't come. And so, like, I've shared and this. And here, the heel doesn't necessarily get it in the end. <laughs> right. Sometimes they win. Yeah. When they're all heels, that's all that wins. Right. So it's, but it's tough, right? One of the reasons I think a lot of us have shied away from playing the true face. And, and honestly, even right now with Cole, it's super hard. Because unless someone is feuding with you, they don't have a use for you because you're not abrasive to rump up against. And so it's really hard to get traction and do anything when the heel isn't choosing to come at you. It's, 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 almost, a universe, it's almost a universal truth that playing a heel is much, much easier. Playing, right. I've played face characters. Playing a face character is daunting sometimes depending upon where you are yeah especially unless you're gonna go play the superhero that you know you can't do that i mean that's the only time you can really pull a face where you don't have to be abrasive where you just step in every time you're needed you step in but you still need them to take action in order for you to do something mm -hmm. like the the dynamic of the face is to wait for to respond and then to respond. Right. So if, so if the villains decide not to post for a week, what are you going to write about? Reading the paper? Right. <laughs> I mean, Saving seriously. We're going to start just doing posts, <laughs> reading the paper. <laughs> Yesterday, I ran today? outside to save the neighbor's cat. <laughs> right. I guess that's when you do jazz. A lot of jazz going on. So let's. Doing in the right box, though. Let's see if we can not swerve the topic and get back to it. Um, yeah. So why are your best swerve characters so good at the swerve? Everyone underestimates Max. I would agree. Everyone expects to find him drunken in a gutter. They don't expect him to actually think while he's, well, unable to stand. I, I would agree with that 100%. Absolutely. Hey, we need to give Kyle a shout out on the live stream for saying that Gino looks like he's on a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gold. Swerve! <laughs> oh. I was waiting for the fart. I mean, honestly, I was waiting for that. You know, the little lean onto it. That was fantastic, Kyle. Well done. All right. Who's Kyle? Oh, down. Don't, 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 don't. No lower. What uh, what makes Storm so good that he got to swerve people that often? You know, I, you know, I, I seriously, man, I wish I could tell you. I, I I know this. When I commit a storm with swerve, I always get the same rhetoric afterward. Did you just say when I commit a storm with swerve? No, no. So when I could, did I? Yeah, did I, did. I, I think you did. You been swerved by your liver. That, they, they're so synonymous, he just interchanges the words. I may be a slight list. Oh, you stole it. Swear okay, me. anyway. Um, I don't... I always, get, I always get the same rhetoric every time I swerve anybody. I saw it coming. You, you, you do this all the time. The, you know what? And, I've said, and I don't know what it is. Maybe I am really more manipulative than I think I am. Uh, to be honest, because you keep telling me that you saw it coming, yet I still did it to you. Walked right into it. Right. That's what Max said. As a matter of fact, I was looking again last night, and I was uh, I was looking at one of the posts from the uh, Instant Karma Initiative right after we swerved. And swerve two. Swerve two. Oh yeah, like your your niece or your tag team partner or. Your niece's best friend, or all of them, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Um, but I was I was reading a post that I did because Chance, you know, did a post, and 
you know, I saw this, I saw that. And I just literally spent the entire post breaking it down going, well, if you if, if you if you do A and it equal, you know, plus B and it equals C and you walk right into it, who's the real stupid person here, me or you? <laughs> so I I don't know honestly. I I just I get lucky. I I guess I can. I'm more manipulative than I really. No, you got the star power. Even though you're a walking landmine, everyone's going to keep stepping on Storm because he's fucking Storm. And well, and isn't it also I the mean, outcome? You know it's coming, but... So, if you really want the best possible feud with Storm, isn't the first move to see if you guys can be a tag team so that he'll swerve you and you have the natural, like, used-to-be-partners-become-enemies storyline to do? Yeah, but here's... Okay, so here's the thing, though. If we're going to be honest, I'm... I don't swerve... I get this reputation for swerving everybody, but if you really look back... Yes, I do swerve a lot of people, but I don't do it as much as everybody likes the, the claim. Because some people out there who will remain nameless basically have got me down at swerving myself like every 1.6 hours. Okay, to be fair. To be fair. Storm has swerved Maverick more than he swerved anybody else. <laughs> I hate you that guy. You swerve yourself more than you have swerved anybody else in the game. Not myself, swerve, my brother. Don't swerve starvation. He, no. I can't help it. My brother's retarded. What do you want me to tell you? As a matter of fact, the last time I did swerve him, and I know Gino remembers this, I slept with his wife. And she thought I was him. Hasn't everyone done that? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Wait, no, no, not Kitty. This was a different one. Never, never commissioned and wrestle again after that either. No, he did not. Kicked him out. Wives has got rid of him. How many Here's wives? Mormon. What well, was the ultimate swerve? Kitty swerving Maverick by having a dick. Oh no! Oh. Um, comment of the yep, you win. Winner to you. Also you know, to you. He you have to ask, hey, research. He my answer to gonna come. My answer to your question is: You have to ask my brother. I have no idea. <laughs> Good answer. Thank you. Amazing answer. Thank you. <laughs> so that's the beauty of having a twin. <laughs> let, let me ask you guys this: Is there a swerve that somebody here did that hurt the game instead of helping it? Um, I don't know that the King of Douchebags swerve was great. For... I disagree. I 100%. I can't believe nobody named that swerve when I said, hey, what are the swerves that people on here have done that nobody named the King of Douchebags? Well, there's, there's also the ultimate swerve of uh, Ice Hog swerving his player base. That is the greatest swerve that's ever happened. I was giving credit for it too. Oh my gosh. And he's that's right. And he swerved himself by not taking the credit. I know. He's like, I just say Max blew it up. Fuck, it's mine now. <laughs> um by the way, I'm gonna extend the invitation again. Hog, if you want to come on, talk about how much you hate me and why you hate me, and also why you decided to swerve every player in the game, uh, we would be super interested to have you on. No, but the King of Douchebags, creatively, I I thought it was great, but right. uh, it stirred the Twitter lesbians up for sure. It stirred a lot of Twitter lesbians up. There is no doubt about it didn't that. didn't help when we decided to make a women's championship and then Ed backed over it with a car and spray-painted bitch championship on it. So um, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say I may have not been around for this one, so a little explanation might be. In I was order. just going to say, hey, we've got some some people who might not have been there in those hours. Do you I was in the enacto grave for that one too. Give them the rundown. Uh, it was King of Wrestling three. Uh, I plowed through my end of the bracket pretty quick. It was a uh, dice in the first round. Who I picked. And then I believe uh, somehow. Let me just pause you there. Alexa, you guys see me laughing so hard at that is because 
while we do a, a draft, right? So the number one seed gets first pick, the number two seed can pick who they want and so on. And Gino and I were taking turns going like, who's the free pass? And he goes, I'll take dice. Somehow, and also in my bracket, Alexei Grimm upset Strife. What? 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 No. Okay, you want to talk about Swerve. Strife got served <laughs> by not caring. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Strife has but I got Alexei Grimm. Wait, wait, back, back, wait, 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 back up. I'm old and I think there was something wrong with my ears. Who did what? Right. Yeah, right? <laughs> hey. It's, it's in there. Kid, losing to Cremo is no longer the low bar. <laughs> Do we have anyone oh, who's ever lost to Thor? Do we not in role play? Nobody's ever lost to Thor in role play. Okay, okay. I was gonna say because that's there. You want to find the low bar? Where is Thor? Has anybody reached out to him? Thor Based on the Ohio, length of his posts, I assume he's eight betting. Uh, he smokes a lot of weed in Cleveland, as far as I know. Ohio. You know, it's. There's different places in Ohio. It's not like Rhode Island or something, you know. Let's uh, let's get back to the story. So you took dice. You took dice. Got Alexei Grimm instead of Strife in the second round, and I moved on to the finals. Real easy. Or I, or I faced Acid Ed, and I think it was you came to me and like, are we going to do this or are we just going <laughs> to, are we just going to do a match or are we going to figure something out? So, so again, Ed and Gino got together, swerved the whole power base, shared the king of wrestling and just took over. <laughs> and we named our stable the power base. That's right. <laughs> so how this actually went down on my side is, uh, he got a free pass to the finals. And by the time I got there, not that I didn't have a relatively free pass. It wasn't the strongest year in the King of Wrestling. Um, but I got to the finals and went, There's, we've done this dance before. Like, we've been feuding with Ed and Gino by this point for a while. Right. We'd already had the big blowout. Right. And so we end up meeting in the King of Finals Wrestling, and there was nothing on the line. We'd traded big wins. We'd had, like, we'd done the whole story. And I thought the only thing that makes this interesting is we can make everybody else angry. So I pinged him and went, hey, you don't really want to write this match, do you? And he was like, I'm listening. <laughs> and, and so you to do the least amount was perfect. We we this, this was also a lot of there, there was talk of the inner circle, and they're all in it together and they're setting it up, and then it looks like we set and it up. We <laughs> we... <laughs> there were people who were like, well, of course the judges picked them. They're this. It's all the inner circle, this, that. So we get to the finals, and I'm like, you know. <laughs> Let's just. And when we did it, and I'm sure you can figure out who we mean, the Twitter lesbians lost their minds. Like complete meltdown which that? really only made us more entertained Cremo immediately just started trying to fix everything <laughs> you're not suspended I unsuspended you <laughs> so true um, I'm rich and I have money it's it probably didn't help the game at a time when the game needed a sh an infusion of life. As opposed to just driving out your Twitter lesbians. Right. right. I, so here's the thing. Gino and I, like, we'd been in the, in the original King of Wrestling, which is, I think, clearly the strongest field the King of Wrestling had. Um, I think it was one more. All the other ones were 16. That was the only 32. Man right. One. Yeah, it was a big one. Everybody was in it. It was strong, huge field, quarter or semifinals. You know, the final four in that was really strong. And then no, you no know, we, we're, we're a couple years down the road, and I'm like, 
I mean, kind of feels like we could do this every year. I'm not interested in that. Are you interested in that? I had, went, to be talked, I had to be talked into doing the King of Wrestling. And I'm like, and then I, if, I, if I compete, I don't have to judge, right? <laughs> I think that sealed it. Uh, I, 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 I really like, uh, so first of all, Tim's right. It was, it was funny, but it wasn't good for the game, especially not when we did it. Um, and the other thing I, I think, you know, is, is Brendan saying like, Hey, if we did it now, nobody wants to be a judge. I get that. But the field would be close to insane. Like it might be. Our the field best. right now, if we tried to, if we weren't going to burn out the entire player base, right. that'd be one of the strongest KOWs we've ever seen. Right. I have, I have a question, actually. Yeah. How how many players to do a solid sponsor wars do we need? At least uh, double what we have now. You So you need to pull a minimum. Sponsor wars? So I think this is the question, all right? And this is pretty good. Hold on. Let me fix my video. Um so I would say in my mind, Sponsor Wars needs 24 active players. Minimum. Minimum. Ideally, 32. Eight active players per team. I would say 40. 10, 10 per team because, you know, per team. two yeah, or three. You don't want to have just one side versus the other. No. Also, would a three-team sponsor wars work? I think it's a little less in, enticing, isn't it? I think you need more. My experience that one team always just kind of peters out anyways. and But isn't that because one team drafts really stupidly? Or the team captain disappears? That I was just going to say because the last time I was we, – we did uh, sponsor wars – if I remember correctly, that's what happened. Just because the team drafts poorly, you know, but you do, I feel like you need at least four. you <coughs> you, you got to have four. I would almost be interested in going, uh, like, if we were going to do something different, you get me 30 active players, and we're not crazy far off of that. Like, we're a little far off, but we're not crazy. We're close-ish. Um <laughs> You give me 30 active players, and I'd rather go five teams of six um, than I would want to go. Question, if we advertise Sponsor Wars for May. Would, would anybody that... come back to play? Right. I know. I Sponsor Wars got me to FedEx. Sponsor Wars was a really good time. Uh, and also, would anybody come back to see us get the four or five captains on here and do the draft live. Yes. That would be a draw. That would now, be. That would it would not be draw. a draw for the person who gets picked last. That's Mr. Irrelevant. So what I'm saying is dice don't tune in. <laughs> We'd probably do like the first three, four rounds. And then this always seems to be people filter in right. later. So speaking of, can we talk swerves? I would like sure. to congratulate every Sponsor Wars captain on respecting the cone of silence and refusing to draft he who shall not be named and yeah. drafting characters that didn't even exist so that the next captain had to figure out how to deal with the fact that that was the only selection left available. That was actually the FedEx draft. Yeah. The, was, it, was it the, uh, the, was it the, the FedEx draft? Split. Yeah, that the branch, branch split, split definitely had that happen. The branch split, then, we are giving props to uh, Ridgeway, Titus. <laughs> Biggest swerve ever. We're all back. Ridgey's hiding. Ridgeway, Titus, and uh, now that seems fake. Maybe Price? Haley, right? Yeah. Yeah, he got on and did the drafting. He did all the hard work. Right. Do you not remember, uh, at some point, didn't Tim get frustrated with us and kind of like... Yeah, he's fine, I'll point. take him. <laughs> and that's how he ended up in Evo X. That's right. Poor Tim. Uh, the, and, and the problem with him, by the way. What's that? 
in the whole uh, rumble with with the whole brand split. That was his last post. The owners got rid of him, which is the irony of it was the worst irony of the batch. That that got rid of who? The one we don't speak of. Oh, cone of silence. Come on. Uh huh. Respect the cone. But didn't have to respect the cone. We hate fucked it. So so I'm not saying, saying his name. <laughs> Tim, Tim is saying like, "Hey, I broke. I get it. I think that Tim's." Tim's problem was he was an island on his own and we didn't bring him into the group to go, hey, Tim, yeah, we're not doing this. Don't do this. Don't break. Stay. I think he didn't do his research and look back through and find. I was like, I was going 30 pages back. Who's like, ooh, Mitch Scabbard, the, the, the pirate. And... <laughs> the pirate. That's, <laughs> by the way, that's the first thing I thought when Devin Deshaun decided he was a pirate. I was like, oh, Mitch Scabbard's back <laughs> just immediately. I think we were doing a snake draft, so I did expert. The uh, conjoined twins, I snaked them around. <laughs> I think that's probably when Lars checked out. Uh, so I think the drafts that we've done probably don't get enough credit for being swerves and were. Romulus okay. Winters went real, real high. And I was going to draft him. Was he a sim so monster or something? It doesn't make sense otherwise. Hey, he let was, me pause you. Active. Let me full pause you because I, I haven't been able to process this. I think we're going to wipe out the entire history of the superstar title. I think it's all invalid. And here's why the Kansas kid won the superstar title in a match that included the Kansas kid, me, and Valentine. And seven days later, lost a role play match to Romulus Winters. Did we let Titus judge it? Because I lost the match to Romulus Winters, too. Uh, maybe like, we let Weedy this, judge this it. This little Princess Tiamat stage. Oh, God. I, we're Princess not convinced Tiara. that wasn't his better version. The <laughs> Thurman Vara machine. Um, it, so, so we talked about swerves that for sure didn't help the game, and I think the King of Douchebags came out on top in that one. Um, were there swerves that actually did help the game? I think the swerve, the talent swerves helped. Oh, that kind okay. of bridged the gap back to Russell. That's why Titus came and Titus, yeah. Titus uh, swerving show and importing us. That is probably one of the best swerves that helped the game. Hey. Yeah, and just us being there, take basically taking over Rassel when it died. Right. What? Where would they go? Uh, would they have known to come to us if we hadn't been there, just beating the hell out of their top bed? Interesting question. To did Titus warn anybody we were coming? Yes. Thanks. So. But it wasn't much warning. It was more warning that I got this character. Because I remember specifically getting some kind of PM from Dice about, oh, you're going to finally come to wrestle, huh? And I'm like, <laughs> it's a hell of a lot more just me, motherfucker. Oh, that's I remember I remember Jeff was like, who should I take over there? I'm like, what? you should take Grayson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would have the most impact, don't you think? And you're like, oh, I really wanted to be able to get in the ring, and I really also didn't want to totally torch Tim when I did it. Um, no, but Grace was, definitely made an appearance on in show. The the uh, the piece that I think stood out though is that you know Chris was clear at that point, like he just didn't know, and he said, "I I don't want Alan, I want Ed," and I said, "No, you're you're getting Alan because Alan and Gino are a package." And he just didn't know what the deal was. And and pretty quickly, we turned him around on that. Not as quickly as you got Dice to quit, though, Max. <laughs> it was uh, not even 36 hours. It was fast. Um, you know the line? What, do, what does my name and a cum bubble have in common? They're both coming out of Dice's mouth. <laughs> Every time we turn around. Right. Um let's 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 ask another question and and let you guys kind of jump in on this one um 
what swerve did you not pull that now you look back and you regret holding back on it? Like it could have been a great moment. And it was probably like, I won't pull it. This is going well. And then it just never really has, like you don't look back and go, that was one of the high points. Okay. I should have swerved Max before he went inactive. <laughs> hey, alcohol beat you to the punch. I forgot about the game for about a year and a half. Five years. In fact, I didn't come back until you called me for the invasion of show. I was inactive the whole fucking time. I come back and was like, what the hell is that? Oh, shit, it's him. Yep, yep that's right. I, I, would have to, I would have to go really old school for this one. Um, so let's hear it. Yeah. Because I don't have a problem swerving most anybody. But back in CWF, it was one of my very first, well, probably like my second swerve with Storm. Um, and I touched on this the last time around. Why Prototype can eat a dick. No so Prototype and Jericho and Papa Guido had a character. And I believe the fourth guy was Riot. That was weird. And I was supposed to be in it with Storm. And I was part of Bobby Bob's All-Stars with Snap Taylor and Canadian Kid and Flesh Basher. And I was going to swerve them to join this the, the stable that I can't remember the name of. I, I just can't. And in my infinite wisdom, I went, wouldn't it be funny if I double swerved and I swerved them in favor of Bobby Bob. So I took their, I took their, their, their quintessential moment and I took a giant shit on it. <laughs> but I always liked Jericho. And I, I think Papa Guido's character was, like Vaccarito or something like that. I can't remember. I'm probably saying it wrong. But there was a part of me that actually wanted to go along with them to see what happened. And so I kind of I kind of regret. No, I, I don't regret doing that because the double swerve was fucking awesome. I'm lying. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, that's the close. Well, I don't regret it. <laughs> don't regret it was it. a lie. It was a Yeah, Gino's not. Gino knows me like a book. What can I tell you? I should have swerved the guild if you want to talk about ancient history. Yeah, we do. I should have I should have swerved the guild when I was slumming. I think it was uh, CRF. Yes. I the hell, I was there. I don't remember, but I was like the oh, I was one of the only ones there. I was holding the entire Fed down for them, and it was an opportune moment just to switch sides and go. I don't remember who the fuck was even trying to scout me at that point? But uh, they were running with the uh, Polish Eagle. But it was the opportunity was there. I'm like, I'm getting out of the Fed here in about another month. I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to stick to it. Yeah, I should have totally bombed that shit out. Sorry, Al. I I probably should have swerved Al and Scott after the first King of Wrestling. You should have swerved the most by court when you realized I was after you. I, I'm surprised it didn't happen as an effort to win that match in the King of Wrestling. That, thinking back, that probably would have won me the match. Right? Instead, I played the reveal into the Instant Karma Initiative with Grayson, and that won me the match. Yeah, but I always get to say Grayson screwed me out of the King of Wrestling. Fine. It doesn't bother <laughs> me at all. In fact, it's a badge of honor. And the best part of it is, you know who knew that I had won before Gino knew that I won? his wife because he said hey so even my wife read it and went oh yeah you just lost <laughs> where well, by the ring percent wrestling uh, that's <laughs> one of the best swerves you want to talk about like commissioners in on it it's uh when mav let me use my spare character for the one world championship and inadvertently gave me nine fucking clones because of it and I got to use that trick twice. I can't remember who was running CWA, though, because you were in NGPW, and that's where the clones showed up. Who was in CWA that actually sent me? Was it you, Jeff? Uh, no, but it might have been Tim. I think he it got was, CWA he, he for a little bit Tim. of time. What's that? Yeah, I, was, I was sent from CWA as the little regional uh, ringer. 
Right. Oh, wait, you're sending me to NGPW where I have other men. Fuck it, we're in. I have two spare posts. Yeah. <coughs> this may come as a surprise to you, but I was not welcomed into the commissioning circle in Russell, so I didn't get any feds there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, hold on a minute. Wait, wait, hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Mav just called. He said that wasn't his fault. Right. Just so you know. Um, trying to get is, there, is there a swerve that somebody else pulled that you wish you could have been in on? Uh, I might have ones that was inactive for, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm, gonna, if I'm going to be honest... I would have liked to be on the King of Douchebag if I was around. Was <laughs> there was a lot of white heat involved in it. It's only a good swerve if you get white heat. <laughs> like if I would have known about the uh, corporate America heat. That's right. That's the next step past X Pac heat, honestly. It's like Hank Hooligan heat. Ooh. Um, if, if I would have, if I would have known about the uh, instant karma initiative, I might have, I might have jumped at that. Made the turn. And I, honestly, if emissary would have stayed active, I might have eventually turned to it. You want to know the, and you, I was gonna say, you want to know the truth too. I wanted to. I seriously, I talked to emissary, and I was like, dude, I know I could get Gino on board, but the only reason I didn't do that is because you were with Alan. And I didn't think I could get him to turn on Alan. But that's before we became, like, like when you turned on me, Gino and I weren't yet Team SBFF. Right, but you guys, you guys were still already working together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and I, I saw where that was going to go, and I didn't want to, I didn't, you know, and if you remember in, in the Instant Karma Initiative, I used your kid instead for a little while. Yeah. James as a way to kind of get you involved in the whole thing. Without you actually getting involved, but yeah, and I tried to actually have him join uh, Legion as Karma, just kind of on his own, but it never. Right. Let's. Uh, How, how's that for a fucking swerve? You guys do Legion, and nobody fucking calls me. Yeah, that is the swerve. That is the swerve right there. <laughs> Found out about that roll in at the very end. Um. So I was got to, nobody calls me. I always got to organize stuff. Let me. <laughs> Maybe sometimes I want to be romanced, like like a, a till a crow. So you're gonna be a crow soon enough. Me and oh, me yeah. and hey, man, brother-in-laws. I I see a. We're gonna have a proper Australian wedding too. I see a proper uh, tag team coming. Weed man and person peoples, the brothers in law. Don't you mean? Don't you mean person crow? Person crow. He because person and people person crow. The name. Person will take her name. He's oh, yeah. down with that. You wouldn't have such a bad name with person crow. You would right. definitely oversell that. <laughs> um, earlier. Well, hold on. Before you kick me though, we haven't gotten to the favor. Everybody's favorite. Yeah, it's, it's, okay, go ahead. Everybody's favorite swerve is Gino on Johnny Excess on New Year's Eve. It is. It is my favorite swerve. Price because was there, there was there was nothing at stake. Nothing at all. And there there was the stable never broke up. We kind of split up here. Stayed in different rooms for a little bit. So Excess was running an angle, kind of the Hank Hooligan angle, where he would just like put up a post about him winning a match and he was like on a streak and he just started like writing posts about it. Every, ma every match he had, it was adding to his streak and he wanted to keep his streak going to the end of the year. Right. And so he's win, 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 win. All his posts are about him winning matches. And so on New Year's Eve, and it was pretty close to midnight, I, I had also, hey, guys, we should have a big network New Year's Eve party. So everybody's there. Let's and connect. Like, oh. And then he posts, and it's Gino schoolboying uh, Price. 
and stealing a pinfall. With Naka right there. Right there before New Year's Eve <laughs> as the, bells, or the ball's about to drop. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> With super I thought of it in like October. <laughs> ah, so you are a fan of the long con as well. I got burned on that long con. Thank you very much because it was going to be great. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. But, but, you know, that's part of it, right? So it's part of it is, you know, the longer you wait on an angle, the bigger the value of the swerve. But every time you choose to go long, there's a chance it falls apart. And that was kind of the perfect swerve because it was great, but there's... He, he got swerved, but he didn't get swerved right, like right. corporate right. America swerved. Yeah, or usually no most swerves are. Know. The better the swerve they are, it's because, yeah, you you really hurt that guy's feelings. Basically, is what it boils down to. <laughs> you right. might have hurt his feelings. Well, good Don't job. <laughs> um, we we talked earlier, and and Gino was pretty clear about saying like. Grayson is the one who has like all the swerve potential amongst my characters. One of the reasons Look at what you're doing to poor Tony Robes. I, I have worse in store for him. He was disrespectful <laughs> of Mars. And he's gonna get he's gonna get the full Vince. So oh, no chance. <laughs> right. That's what uh, the one of the reasons that that's true about my commish character is that for me, a lot of the things that are swerves or that I say to somebody, you should swerve that person to do this or you should swerve into this. And I've been doing it since the first time I was a commissioner way back in IPWL is the, the ability to, to see an angle and pull it together as the commissioner so that your cards blow up and your activity blows up. Like, that's one of the great things about being a commissioner is to be able to prod somebody and go, you know, if you swerved out of that and this guy swerved out of this and you guys formed a team, you'd have heat for four months. And the guys go, really? And as the commissioner, you're like, yeah, it's the best idea ever. And then you don't like, you don't have to think about card booking. There's stories and angles. Six months down the road, guys have history. They never would have had like, it's one of the best things as a commissioner is getting guys to actually do the things that create the history moments in your Fed. One thing I'll say is, though, I can't imagine anybody going stone cold on Grayson and having any effect because, like, I'll just... Having any effect. Sorry, That's the care. real kick right there. You can't... It, it's Grayson. He's a dick. Right. You can't, you can't go stone cold on Grayson because I... I I just won't book you. I, I just, I, so I'm in charge. I'm in right. charge. I, I, you're not I making me real money. So, like, <laughs> I'll go full Vince on you. It's true. I'm not against that. You'll yeah, get but, Vin, but Vince would sell Stone Cold. <laughs> yeah, but he made money. You, you guys right. are all you're not money. making me real money. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're kind of making me want to go super kick Grayson in the mouth next time I see him. Do it. See what happens. I might. See I what might. happens. I might. I banned people for less. If I if if I ever come back from Japan, I might. I took robes out of his title matches. I don't mind doing these things. <laughs> Stuck him on the low card. I what tried out. Do, I tried out douche Grayson. It was a stalemate. <laughs> That's right. Was that because you stopped putting an effort? <laughs> wow. Wow. Woo. Oh, um, I just mean three martinis, the heat starts flowing. That's right. He, 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 he. So let's let's transition a bit. We've been talking about our characters, we've been talking about our game, we've been talking about it from a very like personal in what we're doing level. Let's change gears. Let's talk about a little bit from the idea, the meta idea of swerves in our game. Because when was the last time you saw a great swerve in our game? Like the kind that really impacts story and character and the Fed. <coughs> okay. How many there were legit swerves or just, you know, planned in advance because it was good for the storyline? 
because you don't see really swerves when you have a player base of under 25. I, but isn't that a problem? Like, and, and here's the thing. I think we all know there's a point coming because they started in a story where they were rivalists. Uh, and then they got together. You know there's a point where they break apart and go back to being rivals, right? Gee, sounds I, like the new breed. I, I mean, you read into it however you want. Isn't there a point where, so here, it doesn't have to be. Would anybody be surprised if in the next month, person people swerved Cole Styles? I would see Cole Styles swerving person people's first. I don't know that I would be surprised. I, I, I would, because I've only been back on the boards like a week, so it would surprise me because Person people seems like a good kid to me. I don't know. Does he? Because he's, he's got not some not really a problem. No, not, not really. He's got a terrible he's name. Not sharp enough. He doesn't take his meds. He could swerve everybody and come in with a gun one day. Seems like the guy that might swerve you, but it's not really his fault. <laughs> I, I don't think that's Oops. Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. Let me swerve you again. Um well, bro. I don't know that 25 should be the reason that you don't swerve. And and so I understand what Bill's saying, like the white heat, we can't afford to lose anybody. No, but not the, even that. It's not the even story. the white heat. It's You can't do it when you know everyone in the fucking player base. Why? Because you're paying closer attention. You have one board. You have one group. You can keep a closer eye on what's going on. It's a lot more difficult. Okay, yeah, fuck you, Stormy. You can do that. Hey, I'm just saying. But you're not going to see. But you're, it's it's not. It's a different process now. But I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. We're we're vibing here. But I keep swerving the same people over. I, I I'm, <laughs> I'm willing to. I, I'm willing to. Well, I mean, I'm not going to put my money where my mouth is. I haven't decided if I want to bring Storm back or not. But I'm willing to bet in this environment if I really wanted to. I could find somebody out there to swerve. Right. Well, there's also something about the uh, West Virginia housewife syndrome. <laughs> she keeps coming back no matter what you do to her. So let's... You're not wrong. Let's, let's consider it, though. Like, I, I don't know that I buy Bill's position. I think tomorrow... Omega gets a really neat idea in his head. He sends a quiet message to somebody. Hey, I've always played the good guy. I'm ready to be the bad guy. Is there a landing spot for me? I mean, he's been talking to Amareza. She's in the new breed. They're clearly heels. Could he, in the middle of a, like, in the tag team title tournament, about to win the championship with Carnage, swerve in our environment? Of course he could. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll say. I'll, I'll say. The point. Never mind. I, I get. I see what you're going with. Yeah. I, I, I'll say. I mean, it I'll doesn't say. have to be the white heat corporate America. I want to stab you in the face. Swerve. I'll. I'll say this, and, and because I and I agree with Jeff on this too. Because one of the, I think one of the reasons I was, and I keep referencing this because it was pretty much the last one I really did was you know with Instant Karma Initiative. Yep. And if you go back and you look at those posts between me and Emissary, when me and Emissary were having a feud, you were 100% convinced that Storm and Emissary hated each other, which is why in the conclusion of that, it was, yeah, and it, it became, and, and all of a sudden, oh, uh, hey, you remember, and I don't remember what I said, but I, I, I'm at Storm standing next to Eve, and I'm like, yeah, okay, this, that, and the other thing, and I said, but guess what? That was me. And then I, like that, you know, and I, I think you can do it. But like you were saying earlier, Jeff, you you have to take you have to take your time. You have to gauge people. You have to watch what they're doing. And when when you feel like you're reeling them in, that's when you start making the moves. Because if you do it too soon, it has no effect. If you do it right. too late, it's like eh, I saw that, you know. So so just I want to like tip some people know. I want to tip everybody off when Tony and Amareza and Dawson decided they were going to new, be the new breed. I was like, you're going to be the tag team that Alan Scott was in when he broke into the business? Yeah. Immediately, I flagged it in my head and went, oh, that's an angle. And Tony was so actively trying to get me to come back and play Alan Scott. Like, 
actively prompting me. And, and so Gino and I are like, Tony's a parent, like, let's make fun of him for not having an original idea. And I reached out to Tony and said, well, actually, first I said, why don't you kind of copy some of our ideas that might draw Alan out. <laughs> right. And then turned on it. So he swerved him so that he could use the parrot on him. That was the first Discord swerve. Right. That parrot's amazing. Over one. So I the second parrot from the boners that made him quit the boner force. Right. I and then sent, that's morphed into a pigeon somehow. I sent Tony a message. Stoner and pigeon. And Benny. said to him, here's a couple of names. Drop them casually in your posts. Don't do it frequently. It's a long game. And he went, what is it? And I didn't even tell him. I just said, it's a long game. It'll pay off for you. One day, you'll be done with this new breed whether the stable breaks up or whether it falls flat or whether people go inactive, one day you'll be done and you'll be glad you dropped these names. And if you go back and read his old posts, he got off a phone call with somebody going, you know, it worked out great. Thanks, Lane, and hung up. Lane Flack was Bruce's original new breed character. Mm -hmm. And that whole story was lined up so that when things were dying, Alan could come back and Tony could stand up against him with his dying new breed behind him and then turn and be part of the original new breed against his old stable. We All of that was put in place, and then people started reading the old boards and killed it. And I sent him a message and went, so here was the plan. And he was like, well, shit, that would have been fun. Well, being, but sometimes being, the long game doesn't pay off. Well, the thing, the thing is, Jeff, I didn't see the new breed the Alan Scott Lane Flack version. That was the point. That was, that was the thing. I'm at, I'm looking for old matches. Like there's a couple that I remember writing, but I never got into. So I'm like, oh look, he unlocked this, and I happen to stumble over new breed. I'm like, oh shit, I gotta shit all over my own stable real quick to do some damage control. Alan <laughs> Scott it was in somewhere. Lane Flack and Ryan Scott. Ryan the original Scott. new breed. You got it. And, yeah. and then, of course, Mano shows up, and he's like, oh, I see all this talk about the new breed on Twitter. And he looks in the bar, and he's like, I don't see Alan and Ryan. And I was like, oh, so he's back, and he's going to tip the scales. And I was like, so I didn't so understand what he fucking meant by that. I'm like, something ain't right here that I accidentally found it. Right, which is all, like, listen, there is a gamble involved, but we all know, and this, to Storm's point, if I come in with Alan Gunning and tried to pull that in three weeks of you guys deciding you were the new breed, even if we pull the swerve, what's the impact? Like a two out of 10? Like who cares? If that happens in June, as we're getting to the end of sponsor wars, it's a it's 10 different. out of 10. It's a legendary moment. And Tony Starr goes through the roof and all of the ex-members who aren't with Alan and Ryan are after Tony. And there's a feud and there's a... So what you're saying is I've inadvertently swerved Tony? I, I am saying that you swerved Tony's future. If he never becomes the king of wrestling, it's your fault. Awesome. But also... He loves taking credit for stuff streak. he didn't really do. That's right. That's Bill's I big accident. Dream. I theoretically killed a thing that didn't happen. I'll take credit. And then it came back. I love my kill. And then it Fuck died that. again. So I really want, I think that really lined up with what the point you were making about Storm, right? Like too soon is a problem. If you don't find the right timing and if you wait too long, it can get killed on you and you don't get to do it. And you, and you know, and you learn over time, you know, like I was, you know, like I was telling you last time around, you know, when I, when I swerved that kid, uh, double A back in IRCW, I mean, to me, it was epic because I made the kid quit. But in reality, you know, when you're younger and you, you see that payoff and you're excited, oh my God, okay, this is going to be so awesome. And you just pull the trigger. Right. And to you, it's cool. And to maybe a two or three people, it's cool because you made somebody quit. But overall, everybody's like. <laughs> well, that, that, that well, kind of, when know, there's are renewable feds, that's cool yeah yeah right what gino said when there's a lot of feds and and like i said we had back in the slam <laughs> inexhaustible source inexhaustible right. people who were kitty quitting before kitty quit right but so oh god it was a thing 
So here, let me jump this because because Tim kind of threw something out and said, you know, at, uh, Omega said like, hey, you know, now that you've convinced everybody you're not going to do that angle, you could still do it. And Tim's like, we've got to build something before we you, we can swerve it. So let's throw this out because we're all here. Amarez is not really active enough to be an issue. So Bill can weigh in. Who's going to wait too long and end up getting swerved, Tony or Dawson? Wow. I If, if I was going to pick one, and again, based on my limited knowledge, because I spend days sometimes going back to read what I've missed because I've only just come back. Yeah, yeah. If I had to base it off of the two characters, Dawson's going to get swerved by Tony. So the heel swerves the guy who's ultimately going to be a face, which I think has been their story in the way they've lined it up from the beginning. Yeah. But for us as players, you got to look and think to yourself, one of them's going to wait a week too long and pay the price, and the other one's going to get to claim the victory of the swerve, right? Yeah. Well, there's the the rest of the stable, too. You got to – who's – Who's working it behind the scenes? I feel yeah, like maybe Chip's, Laura, maybe Tim. Chip's nothing. Um, Axel's... Maybe Dawson's working it behind the scenes, you know? Axel's yeah. too busy being best friends with Cole. So unless Amareza has a big plan coming up... Well, are you going to... Or... What about Bucky? What about Bucky? He's going to get put in cryostasis. As long as you call him Bucky, he's getting stuck in cryostasis. Well, Toronto and winter. We'll just throw him outside. It's true. Or if I was playing it now, if I'm watching this now and I'm sitting there in the, tone, in the shoes of Tony and Dawson, right now I'm going, okay, look, they already think we're going to do this. I'm going to go out of my way not to do it, but I'm going to troll every single one of you by making it look like we're going to do it. But here's the thing. They made it. That gives the other one the chance mm -mm. to be the one who does it when you think you're not like They don't have tag straps yet. And that's been a focus for months. Tag, tag, tag. You got to wait. Okay, you, you say that. Off Hold on. I want to talk to this because on the dirt sheet, Tony gets to go off, blah, 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 screw Grace, rah, rah. But when we post and say, hey, what match do you want for the pay-per-view? He didn't say a tag match. Nobody asked for a tag match. But you all think you should get crowned the tag titles, but nobody's asking for tag matches. Nobody wants to be in tag matches. Nobody says, hey, don't give me the number one contender shot. I want a tag match. I'm about my tag team partner. Here's the truth. Tony Robes isn't about his tag team partner. Maverick Dawson is a stepping stone to help Tony Robes get to the top. And by the way, because Maverick focused on getting himself a TV title, Tony's been in free fall and can't win a match. I disagree. Let's fight about it, Gino. Tony and Maverick, I think they're SBFFs. You shut your mouth. Hot take. I think they're SBFFs. What, you mean they're going to stay shut along your mouth well already. past the expiration period, you mean? No, I think they're, they're just... They got chemistry. They were drawn together, and they're going to stay together. And now they're old news. What? Well, maybe, I, I, maybe in I, three, four years there'll be old news. But I don't think either one of them are swerving four years. each other anytime soon. Jump in, so. Storm. Jump in. I can see. I can actually see both sides of the equation. I, I could. I could see how in the united front against a bunch of us sitting here going, "Oh, we see it coming." They could they could reunite, you know, be stronger. Or let's be honest, as a lifelong mostly heel myself, how often did Blitzkrieg actually ask for tag team titles? You know, did we want because a true heel only cares about one thing myself. I care about my glory. I care about what's on my shoulder. Okay. And a tag team title, sure, that's fun. Okay, me and my partner got it. But a real heel only cares about his own accolades. It's okay? So I can see your side just as much as I can see Gino's side, but I see your side just a little bit more. Yeah, because I'm a little bit smarter than Gino. Everybody knows it. It's not a lot. It's just a little bit. Oh, when, do we, when do we start bringing IQs into this one? I mean, fuck. 
Well, we, we bring insults into the mall. I don't know what to tell you about the rest of it. In fact, Gino has a topic for a future podcast, which is, have we full out become bullies? <laughs> Why is that even a fucking question for a topic? Yes. We, we rank you by how hard we are to kill. That's actually not the topic. I... <laughs> And do you wonder why we only have like twenty some on active people? I, we, I I I actually want to do a serious podcast on uh, the game's impact on people's mental health, right? Which I think could be a thing. Could I meant I actually I actually made yeah, yeah, on that one. I, 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 I listen actually, to you. Sorry. Kind of, I, I mentioned something. Is similar. that very positive? And I feel like also. Uh, Do you, so hey, Miller? Are you just waiting until Storm speaks to talk over top of him? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Total swerve. It's like I'm getting Gino kicked over here. What the hell? Boom. No, I was just I was I was agreeing with your topic because, and I'm not going to divulge into it right now. But I was telling Jeff the other day. Uh, you know, when does role play? I was like, we should do a, a podcast of when does role play become obsessive and addiction and addictive, right? And that's and that's all I'm going to say on the subject because I've got a background on it. But right, I, right. You know, I would be interested in doing something like that. So I think it's very, it's very much are... a, it's very much a drug at times. Yeah, I I think that's right. Hey, listen, we're we're not done with this topic, but I want to tease something because it's such a cool topic. Um, we have a podcast coming, and we're going to pick a date. We haven't nailed it down yet. Maverick, Lars, Grayson, and Titus, and we're going to draft our feds. I was I was looking forward to the Commish podcast. Well, we might be maybe we'll do that as well. But we're going to draft our feds. We are going to get on and fantasy draft our feds. Number one pick, number two pick, snake draft. We are going to pick 10 wrestlers to start our Fed in a draft format. And so don't miss it. Um, if you make it into any of our picks, that's a win for you. Like we've all played with hundreds of players. If you're in the 40 players we choose to pick to start our Feds, uh, it'll be pretty fantastic. So we're going to do that. It, it will be, I think, very interesting. We haven't nailed down all the rules or structure of it. Will we do it of all time? Will we do it FedEx? Will we do – like, we haven't gone through all of that and really nailed we it we got to do, like, mock drafts. Oh, that's going to be great. <laughs> so no, Kuiper, football players. So, listen, I, I could see doing a, a Rislut show entirely about the mock drafts in a, <laughs> an actual draft. How cool would that be? And you guys could submit to Gino – your mock drafts going, this is what I think they're going to pick. Here's who I think is going number one overall. And then so we could submit those out. to Kansas Kid. What's that? Submit those to Kansas Kid. Submit those to the Kansas Kid. Good call. Kansas, you better swerve the fuck out of these boys and boner those mock drafts. Don't, whatever you do, Kansas, uh, don't make any of the boners dream that they could be a number one overall pick. Uh, we saw what happened to Empire. Right. That's why we didn't invite Gino to participate in the draft because we saw Empire and it wouldn't have been good. That's not my thing. Yeah, we don't see that being the way it goes. And and we're gonna draft by character, not writer. So if you know, if we think about um, we think about Bill playing Deke and and playing Max, both are on the table. Somebody might take Deke. Somebody might take Max. And we're taking the characters in their prime. Ooh. 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 Right. That definitely all right if you're gonna take go with characters in their prime you have to do from the slam on so i see from tim that he's already thinking hey there will be a dirt sheet about the draft show oh hell yeah oh, there's gonna be a dirt sheet Max hopefully we can get that. gino to do a re-slut show about it we'll get a dirt show a dirt sheet a re-slut show and then we'll get the draft and if it goes well enough maybe we'll bring some other people on who weren't commissioners in FedEx and find out what their draft would have been in the future. Right? I like That'd it. Be fun. I want to see Carnage's draft. Well, so here's the thing. Carnage when, has a good draft, I bet. When we talked about yeah. top tens, Carnage made a lot of lists. 
it'll be interesting to see where he actually goes in the picks when it comes to draft time. Right. And, and it's funny because all of us know and love different players. So the strategies in the draft might be a little different. Are you going to go, I'll go old school and hope I know some names you don't know. Or are you going to go, Hey, listen, I know who the players are that have lasted and I'm going to pick them now. Yep. <laughs> so who, who wins? Oh, and not to mention. Well, I, so I think we'll post a Are you going for straight up like RP match action or someone who's going to carry a fed on the, you know, the day-to-day -day angles? Where's your focus? Right. That changes your, that changes a lot right there. Because if you're going straight match action, I mean, you got a lot Maybe of you guys have uh, positions you draft. Fair. Like a uh, football team or basketball team or whatever. Your daily grinders, your, Except, uh, your I can't speak, match ringers. I can't speak for football, but I can talk to every other sport that, I, that I'm familiar with the draft on. So I, I don't necessarily get deep into football, but baseball, hockey, and, and basketball, you don't draft for position, you draft for talent. It's just a full out, full stop rule. You draft for talent. Drafting for position in the other sports is a mistake. Yes, but in a fantasy draft, you have to draft for, for position. It determines how you score. He he he, you can't he have he doesn't have, have all pitchers. You can't have all quarterbacks. So we don't live in that world, and let's be super clear. Uh, we can all name a sports team that drafted for position and passed over like an all-time great. That's a mistake. It's always a mistake, and it will be judged as a mistake on our draft. If they go, I've already got a guy who does a lot of great angles but doesn't execute them, so I don't need genocide, we're going to judge that a loss. Hey, this, this idea thing. A lot of people are, are – Oh, this, Gino hold on, do pause, Gino. Hold on, pause. You can say this in a second. The, Gino is about to swerve his own character and try and deny himself. Go ahead, Gino. No, it's just a, a lot of these people. They come up with two, three good ideas a year, and like, how could you give up a good idea? I, I just don't work like that. I'm gonna come. I'm. I have new, new good ideas coming. I might donate good ideas to you. And maybe you can use them. But, you know. Get them. Do it. <laughs> well, listen, I can't argue. You donated a good idea to me, and I took it. You did. And, and to be fair, to be you fair. donated it two weeks before I took it, and you didn't do a thing with it. <laughs> it was not two weeks. You're right. It was probably a month. All right. Um Let's go, let's go back to our topic. So we derailed for a bit, although we got some really good interest on it. And I really do like the idea. And, and I do think we want to kind of tap on some of the things we've talked about. So we'll start talking about it and we'll land up a dirt sheet. We'll line up a re-slut show for your mock drafts and then we'll do a real draft. I think we'll have a great week the week that we do that. So we'll coordinate that between the different shows. Um, let's, before we kind of get to the end of this, let's talk about two two things let's talk about um the top five swerves you would do in our fed today yeah still doing a podcast you guys are fucking faggots <laughs> I, your wife's my new favorite person yep totes i just i just did the first on-air swerve that was awesome <laughs> did you plan that i engineered the whole swerve there that's awesome. That was, work, people. That was amazing. She Tell her we're really fans. That the fact that awesome. she want to come on the podcast, we'd be happy to have her on. No, that's the last appearance. Yeah. Um, oh, come on. She doesn't want to see people. No, you don't want to appear again. Come on in. You don't want to see come people on here. <laughs> <laughs> It's the smartest thing Gino's ever done. <laughs> Cover the camera. That's Marlo right. says I'm the smartest man in wrestling for That's a reason. Right. Oh, fucking hell. We did one a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember which one it was. And my uh, wife and my daughter were sitting at the bar a couple of uh, feet outside my office. 
And both of them were like, well, we'll be on. Why can't we be on? And I was like, I will literally rip my monitor straight out of the wall before you walk into the, this is never, it's happened twice. <coughs> and it hasn't ended well for either person. We're not doing this again. But I thought for a second that we were gonna have a moment with Tino's wife. And I was that was like, a great. Yeah. Come on, Haley. Haley, come on. Oh, that's a that's a Tilla. Oh shit. Hey, so <laughs> I love did anybody see Brendan's post? Gino's cheating on my sister. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh that's awesome. Um Hey, let's let's go back to our swerve topic. I want to talk about two things before we wrap up. And we've had a great chat tonight. Um, we didn't really get into the topic of how the swerve fits in the game overall, although we kind of danced around the edge of it. And, and Bill and I had a bit of a back and forth about, like, can we do it now? And why don't we do more of it now? I do think in a small group, there's a reluctance to swerve because we're, we're friends. Um, exactly, yeah. But I want this. It's the suspicion. It's so, not the reluctance, it's the suspicion. Do you think somebody's gonna swerve you right now? I'm walking swerve bait. The fuck right. do I care? <laughs> you come at you swerve me, cool. I played this game before. Right. But it's not like you but it's not like before where it was a matter of can I set these dominoes in motion without them knowing they're in motion? That was my game. And I needed to have a fed of, you know, 25, 30 people who had no idea who the fuck they are. So I could sit there and start that one that way, start that one that way, and wait for the marbles to roll into place. Right. That was my game. It's not that way anymore. Hey, Mab's giving you the eye, so you better let him talk before he, he gets angry. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, watching, I'm watching Gino. Yeah, he's having a hard time with whatever the fuck he's trying to light. He's trying to light a he, cigar. He's been smoking something the whole night. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a cigar and something else because he lights in front and he lights on top. Uh-huh. <laughs> all I got to say is, Gino, we, I, you got to get all the foreskin. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Um, hey, Miss Ophelia jumped on to our podcast, Gino, and she is very disappointed in you. My sister. Uh, <laughs> my sister. Um, so, sure. so I, I like. I want to take a minute, guys. All of you are very talented writers. I want to talk about the fact that the absence of a good swerve might mean that some of our writers are missing the opportunity to really find the stride of their character and to have a seminal moment. Thoughts? Is it more the experience to the writers that aren't allowing themselves to get swerved? No, well, no. you say not allowing themselves, but I no, don't know that that's. I, I get what he's saying though, because yeah, when you end up on whether you're the one delivering or receiving the swerve, you have an opportunity, and that right. opportunity is you know four months of free white heat. Right. You're going to get booked. You have angles. You have a whole different set of opportunities that. You don't have to go and how the fuck am I going to work this? It's, hey, fuck that guy. So think about it this way. Let me put it in another context. At some point, we're going to do a retrospective. God willing, five years from now, we're going to do it. We're still podcasting. We've got hundreds of them in the bag. And we go, hey, remember when we, we did Resurgence way back in 2021 and we were getting together? Oh, and you go, oh, yeah, I was a tag team partner with so-and-so. What happened? Well, we tagged for like four months and then we kind of went our separate ways and angles and we stopped tagging. Did you swerve them? No. And the tag team is going to be this flat moment of the character's career. And you've missed the opportunity to turn it into something bigger in the character's career. Now, I'm not saying you should swerve every tag team partner. But I, what I am saying is we have some players out there that are going to have flat moments out of this period, this three, four, five, six months. Is flat okay as opposed to this? Does somebody got to be the Genetti? Yeah, somebody's got to be the Genetti. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Wait, hold on, guys. Who's your Genetti? Who's? Please, please don't make me. Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead. Havoc. Hey, I like That's that. That's my Genetti. 
you remember that fucking swerve? That was funny as shit. He Storm who's that your one. I, I, please, please don't make me answer that question. Who's your Janetti? Who's your Janetti? Oh God. Um, Eric, you know I love you, brother. But <laughs> <laughs> Legs, Eric, swerving. Legs, Eric, right to wheelchair. Eric. Legs, Eric, swerving, wheelchair, Eric. Oh man. And and but the thing, but see, but to be honest, is sometimes he just gets caught in it inadvertently. He can't. Oh no! I say he walks into the middle of the minefield. I'm just, I'm just, I love the guy, but I do. I, I've caught him more times than most people, but right. a couple of those are inadvertent. Yeah. Okay, Miller. Who's your Genetti? Uh, I don't. I don't got one. I never really swerved a good partner. Never had the heart to do it. Bullshit. I did. That's no, fair. I know for a fact he had an Alan Scott swerve plan, and eventually it was like, we're too close. Like this is a bad fit. <laughs> the better swerve is to not swerve you. The, the truth of the matter is, what, just to touch on it again, since you were, were talking about the, one of the reasons why down the road people do need to start thinking about that. Now, you know, we're all friends. Bill said it earlier. We're all friends. Maybe you don't want to. Sw- I don't agree with that because I've swerved my friends before. It has nothing to do with being friends. It's knowing how your friends think. Right. And and if you think about it, okay, like for instance, now I'm I'm friends with I'm friends with with uh, Jordan. I'm friends with Eric, and I was friends with Mike, and I turned my back, and my character turned my back, his back on their characters. They were pissed. Don't tell me for a second Jordan wasn't mad as fuck at me. I know Eric was pissed as shit too. But the thing is, it's it's okay to piss off your friends if it translates on the board to a really hot feud, and that's what hundred percent. And that's my argument. And you can and you can have heels. In this, you know, in this game, which we have an abundance of skills, but you have to start. You have to start thinking about how am I going to set myself above? There's a ladder. Nobody wants to be at the bottom. Nobody wants to be at the middle. And when you're in a fed of heels, you have to find a way to propel yourself up farther, other than relying on belts, right? Because there's only a finite amount of belts in a fed. But when you got a bunch of heels, you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, think a, about Amazon. You can get as many belts as you want. That's what Tony Robes. Tony Robes. Tony Robes. <laughs> hey, wait. Uh, hey, legs, Eric. Uh, is is that a plastic belt like Tony's, or is that a little more legitimate? Does it got? Is it styrofoam? Oh, oh, does oh. it does it clink when you hit it? I know the actual answer. I've I've held it. No, 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 no. Wait. You're talking about my 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 big world title. Yeah. I have a real I have a real one. Yes, the uh, the yeah. the old the old uh, NWA WCW. Do you still have the photos of that? Yes, I do. We had it out when I was there. Do you still have yeah. the photos? And then for Christmas, this is a true story. I told my wife. I said the Winged Eagle Championship belt is my favorite in the whole world. I, I wanted the real one. We couldn't afford it, so this is what I got. But you know what? Hey, it's still mine anyway, and I'm happy with it. Uh, hey, guys, if I, 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 I teased a lot of people about their wives. Legs Eric has a solid wife. I love her. She's amazing. So uh, the you. next time that I'm down we'll there, get that belt we'll, we'll get some actual shots of us with the belts, and then we'll get them over to uh, Of, and he'll put them into our entrance, our intro videos, and it'll be <laughs> legit. Hell yeah. Sounds like a plan. That's right. Um, I think that belt might belong to Danny Hodges, though. <laughs> Where do you think the real one went? So we we were we were just talking about that. Like, if think oh, think about what? characters with long dynamics, right? So oh, I'm down. I'm gonna get his belly button. I've been running the talent Nazi gimmick with excess for. We got to be pushing 15 years, like a long time. If, and, and, you know, Bill's been in and Cash has been in, but the core has always been us because Bill likes to go off and boner and stuff. And Cash is not as active as he needs to be, but still legit, right? Mass consumer belongs. 
Um, Max Alini belongs. We, if tomorrow he ran an angle where excess was a nice guy or an excess wasn't racist anymore, I'd swerve him without no preamble, <laughs> no setup, <laughs> flat out serve, swerve, like done. I'll trust you, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that I, make, but that makes sense. Dark. <laughs> it's also a one off. Why? Well, I, I would. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, he deserves exactly the swerve that's coming to him. But really, wouldn't the swerve be laughing as he uh, forgets to post tomorrow? <laughs> Listen, uh, he swerved me better. And I, I think we've all neglected this. I killed Ed and he swerved me by ignoring it and turning him into acid dead <laughs> and having a voodoo priest revive him and walk around with him. I mean, it was pretty brilliant. But, you know, you, you bring up a good point, too, uh, talking about, like, longevity as well. Um, because, and, and that's something that, you know, uh, obviously we're not talking about a bunch of new people with us now, but it could be down the road. Yeah. And it's something that they need to realize, too, is the answer isn't always to end everything with a swerve. Because it kind of sounds, always. and you know, because you have, to, the talent nice has been around for a long time. And while, yes, Ed would totally be within his rights to do what you just mentioned, if, you know, Oh, this morning I woke up and decided I'm not going to be a douche anymore and I'm going to be an upstanding citizen. Edge is going to punch him in the face. We all know this. 100%. But you can't just go out and be like, okay, you know, the, the, the message can't be, oh, man, they're right. We haven't swerved anybody because now all of a sudden we're going to have a swerve fiesta. <laughs> you know? yeah. Here's the thing. And, I like, let me take the other side of that, Storm. I am not sure that we will because I don't know how many players we have that have a real appetite for that moment. <coughs> you, maybe me, but here's the thing. This guy down here really in the corner. A moment, the unless I'm doing it yeah. with, if, I'm, if I'm coming to you with grace and going, hey, I've got a great idea for you, it's a swerve. <laughs> but otherwise, if I come to you with Alan, it's not a swerve. Like, that's not Alan's character. If I come to you with Cole... It's not really Cole's character. It's not really ju like I play a lot of faces. So mm -hmm. unless you're going to turn from being <coughs> a face, we don't really have something to work. And Ed's not really the swerve, right? He's coming to you with a two by four, and you're going to look like wood when he's done. Ed's never going to swerve anybody because Ed's answer to everything is punch him in the face, right? Which I'm is great. Ed saying hello is a punch in the face. Exactly. I'm, I'm pretty. No, so Ed, Ed swerved me once. He went and did douchebag tactics and had me try to work in the cafeteria. Not try to. You worked in the well, cafeteria. I did for a day. Then he you know. douchebagged to Grayson and got control of Ed's contract. And then douchebag draw until the match. Uh, I would like to call this out. It might be the greatest swerve, and, and we haven't acknowledged it at all. The Sim swerves Tony Robes every day. <laughs> oh. That's just reality. Well done, Omega. Well done. Okay. We've referenced the swerve on numerous occasions, but are we going to talk about the corporate America swerve? Well, we kind of had a chat about it when, when uh, Legs Eric was on, but <laughs> we can talk <laughs> about it now. On right want. now? Yeah, let's talk about it. Go ahead. I know. I've heard all no. the angles on Hang it, on. and I've shared my thoughts the on one it. One thing that I found by accident, data mining today. Because <laughs> oh, so um, one of the things that the only real guilt anymore is the fact that we had the opportunity to take down the network. We did. No, we didn't have the fucking numbers. When I realized that the fix was in and we would have to have literally a perfect run for the last week in order to win. Not impossible. That's when I, that's when I dropped the axe. Not impossible. We could have uh, won. Hang on. Got the numbers. Give them to me. Oh, I just said a perfect no, run. No, 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 I had to pull this one. Uh, 7 3 2007 tells you how long ago this shit was. The Blood Brothers actually had the lead at 844, Network Rockin' 799, Corporate America 565. 
Right. So and perfect I was week on the fucking uh, thing is. We'll uh, what's that? Perfect week and we still win. It wouldn't have. We perfect have week and we still win. Yeah. So the improbability of the sim working that well, I decided to take my consolation prize and go for the original slash. So Beak. I no longer feel guilty about not taking. Could that have that won. Nope. I, I I I I still feel a little. No, nah, I don't. Never mind. Yeah, you know, I was about to say. Now that you know the numbers never at would have added up, it would have had to be a perfect week, like um, perfect. I just want to be super clear. Somebody won five matches at our sim and still lost their match. Perfect weeks can happen. Fuck you both. Wait, hold on. Wait, I did what he told me to do. Oh, Word. both. No, no point fingers, okay. both. I will take the blame that I convinced him to go along with it. I Gino was to... the only innocent person in this conversation. Yeah, because uh, he watched it happen and went, what the fuck? Because I did that ever happen before? Because I knew I couldn't trust you. If I'd have known math better, I would have got to swerve you. If I'd have done I the know, math. you tried. Network won by like a thousand. No, I didn't I, need all those points. Honestly. <laughs> I could have swerved okay. you early. <laughs> now that the numbers are out there and uh, the lingering guilt is gone, nope, I felt bad because, wow, I made you a promise and I've held it up up until I inadvertently uh, swerved Tony Robes' future. I, right. I up the record conversation. For for the record, I didn't know anything about what he was just. I mean, he 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 mentioned it. He mentioned this to me this morning, so I still feel guilty. Listen, oh, I don't don't worry. I I feel guilty on a certain personal level, but I no longer feel guilty that I lost the opportunity to beat the shit out of the network because I found the fucking numbers. I'm like. We, we've right. had a lot of pause, 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 pause. There are a lot that. of moving parts involved in this swerve argument. For instance, Bill was in full rebellion against other people being in corporate America for multiple weeks. Had he been focused on winning instead of rebelling, would we have had more points at that point in time? I too was also guilty because I was rail. I mean, and Bill will tell you, I was, I was not, I wasn't complaining. I was railing. You I weren't focused on winning. You were focused <coughs> on bitching. Or apparently swerving. Hey. Ed was uh, starting riffs in CWA. I was the one trying to put out fires just to make sure that the swerve happened. Hey, ha wait, while we're talking doing about is the politics behind it of Give being me. able to put out fires here, start fires here, and wait for everything to burn out right. Is is Axel Hendricks still on our live stream because if Axel's still out there and I see him comment that he's still out there, Axel, I will give you a hype hype. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. He's dying for me to do it for real because it's going to look super dumb. But I told him if he's still out there, I'll do it. You'll have to read our match if you want to know what's going on. Uh, guys, one of the things about you know, the way this word works and how it adds and how it can be positive. Um, in our game is that it can really come out of the blue and be blindsided. Is anybody blindsided by the turn in wrestling anymore? Does anybody not think they telegraph it so badly you know about it before the guy doing it knows about it? Are, that, are, we, are, we, are we talking about actual wrestling? Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing I can tell you from my perspective, yes. Because I've watched... I've been watching wrestling since the 80s, back when it was WWF superstars and it was the guys wrestling jobbers, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, mid card versus jobber. It was just squash match after squash match. Right? Roller much? And then it's the Macho Man in front of the Macho Man logo, cutting a yeah. promo, Mean Gene. <laughs> and the truth be told is that when, you, when you've watched wrestling – when you've covered wrestling, I mean, you know, I was lucky enough to do interviews with with Scott McClinn from SNS with a couple of guys like Ricky yeah. the Dragon Steamboat and what have you. Love Steamboat. Um, when when you watch when when you watch enough, yeah, I mean, it's I'm hard pressed to remember 
the and I'm not saying that there haven't been decent swerves in wrestling, but in order to find some of them, you have to kind of go back to the Attitude Era, because the current product, like right now, the last couple of years, other than NXT, which I actually love, I love NXT, I really do. I don't watch Raw anymore. I don't watch SmackDown because that it's it's like Jeff said. Do I see it coming? I see it coming from a mile away. I'm sitting over here watching a pay-per-view with my son who's been watching wrestling for a couple of years now. And I'm like, this is what's going to happen. This is going to how it's going to go down. This is when it's going to happen. And damn, it's like, it's like I'm writing this stuff. So yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, I can't speak to AEW. I don't watch a lot of that, but you should. I mean, you should. I, I, that's a mistake. You should check it out. Well, let me let me rephrase. I have watched some AEW, and one of the things, and, and this could just be because I'm very old school with the wrestling, one of the things that kind of turns me away from AEW is not that they don't have talent, but because what I have seen so far, it's like a high spot fiesta. They, to me, they're not telling stories in the ring. It's about who can out high spot the next guy. All of wrestling has become that these days. I will say this, though. One of the reasons you want to watch AEW is because bloated, out of shape Gino is super entertaining. Oh my God. Chris Jericho is going to be, you know what? Chris Jericho is going to be in a fucking wheelchair weighing 800 pounds and he's still going to be entertaining. I swear to you. In fact, I'm thinking about running that Gino angle on the boards where Gino shows up and he's like clearly 40 pounds out of shape and yet everybody still wants to put the world title on him. He's like grandpa shape, you know. It's you know, it's funny too because oh, I didn't you watch. Want to put the oh. title on that bloated sack of shit. The next guy who gets the title's like it doesn't really fit. It, it'll come right <laughs> off. I need to put a couple extra holes in this belt. Yeah. You remember when they have the big guy and they had they'd have a little like extension they'd put on it. <laughs> So I, I, I watched I watched when they crowned Jericho with the championship belt. And my wife started laughing because I kept calling him Fat Jericho. <laughs> I was like, but she's like, "What? You don't like him?" I'm like, "No, Fat Jericho is just as entertaining as Young Lion Jericho was." Right. Right. I mean, you want to? I'm gonna tell you. Something. He's like he's like 50. He's not that fat. He's like. But, that's but, you know. but here's the thing about here's the thing, and, and again. If new people who are into this are starting to watch or something like that, you know, we're, we're not not just the, the regulars, but if sometime down the road some new people join us and they want to watch these, yeah, you can't go wrong watching Jericho because Jericho yeah. is a walking class on how to reinvent yourself. Yes. Yes. Nobody. And I mean – you got Triple H, probably the best heel in the game, in the business. You've got guys like Shawn Michaels, who are probably the best sellers in the business, when you know, in-ring performers. But when it comes to reinventing your character, nobody holds a candle to Chris Jericho. Hey, guys, we've been doing this for a couple hours now. Are we not going to talk about Bill's be a dick in the background? Because I love it. <laughs> I like it. I'm good. If it said be like dick, I'd be even more excited. No, I no, thought no. it was, I like Dick. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, hey, let's talk you're about... Gonna, you're not going to look at the crayons? We saw I mean, the crayons. I'm going to spell it out for you. He is the I like that clamp, too. That's a nice fucking clamp. It's red. Let's... It's like a stapler. Let's talk about... Oh, yeah. I, I want to actually hear from you guys. What's the last swerve? on network wrestling that you didn't see coming? The Shield. I don't know. You guys might not even seen that, but it was a pretty big thing. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and now uh, John Moxley in AEW, but Seth Rollins stabbed him in the back. Right. It was... It was pretty much out of nowhere, and I think that's the best swerves are. That's the best swerve, right? Out of nowhere. I'm, that's I'm why gonna, I like. I'm going to disagree because I saw that coming a mile away. I saw that coming a mile away, and I and I'm not saying it was a terrible swerve. I didn't see. I didn't necessarily see Rollins doing it though. Oh, I totally saw Rollins doing it. I totally saw he would. I. I. I if anybody was going to do it, I knew it was going to be Rollins. Um, but. And again, I'm not saying it was terrible. 
for, you know, just, you know, Johnny normal, but somebody who's been watching this for 30, 40 years, I mean, you, you just, you do. Um, as far as the last time I saw a good swerve, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to think on that one. I'm hard pressed to even come up this with one. Like, great, so greatest I, of all time is the NWO. The NWO, yeah. The Hogan yeah, swerve. But you knew it was Hogan, right? No. I didn't know it was Hogan, no. Really? The second he came out, I was like, yeah. oh, he's the other guy. Yeah, but but wait, wait, hold on now. See, and you can't, but I feel like there should be a set of ground rules here. Because, yes, when I'm watching Hall and Nash in the ring and everybody's decimating their land out, here comes Hulk Hogan. I'm with Jeff. I'm like, oh, he's the one. But it doesn't because count. that's who you send out. You send out the third man. Right, but it, it shouldn't count like three minutes before he does it. This is something that you have to see coming in. Like when you I have, say, you have to look at the amount of garbage that was thrown in the ring. Right. Yeah, the um, NWO was probably the last. Ray Mysterio getting darted into the trailer on the next week. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I'm with Gino. I think the NWO, the NWO swear was probably the last good one that I saw. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it was a good one because it followed up. It led to more stuff. Mo uh, a lot of swerves they just fizzle out. And if there's no, this is why I did it. This is what's going on now. Right. Didn't you guys feel like the Genetti swerve kind of went down that road? Well, yeah, you knew that was coming. It was right. <laughs> but but was don't you feel like? Like, there wasn't a real, like, they got one or two matches, and then they just moved on from Gennetti. Like, he doesn't belong in the ring with Sean, and we can't pretend he does. Didn't, didn't you feel like that's what happened? Gennetti got a pin over Michaels, though, in the first, yeah, like, two or three minutes like, after. It was back in the day. It wasn't that a big show. Nobody cared. Yeah, I remember it, though. That that right there, the, the Gennetti swerve, is why I refer to a lot of tag teams. When you, when you see tag teams break up, and I'm talking about Storm referring to this. I've, I've referred to this many times in a post of what I like to call Marty Janetti syndrome. Ooh. Ooh. When you watch those tag teams and you're like, if these, this guy turns on this guy, that's the guy who's going to have Marty Janetti syndrome. That's right? the Janetti. <laughs> Everybody's got a Janetti. Everyone's got a Talked Gennetti. about it earlier. But um, real quick, if you want to talk about good swerves, I want to talk about probably the worst swerve I saw on professional wrestling was when Vince McMahon came out as the higher power. Oh yeah. <laughs> you guys are you guys are under underrating that compared to the like was anybody in the world surprised in the 80s when Paul Orndorff turned on Hulk Hogan? Oh hell no. They, they telegraphed that for weeks. Oh everybody like, knew that was I coming. can't believe he did it. Swerve yeah. I think Gino, Gino just swerved us. Podcast. Gino just Gino quit. Gino quit. Gino quit. Poor guy. Tiny bladder. Oh, he got swerved by age. He had to pee. Right. Um. I I see Tim saying Dawson is not a uh, uh, Robes Genetti. I think he might be. I mean, I know that Tony's promising you he's not, but I can see it coming. Well, wait, but wait. You can't call Dawson Robes Janetti because Dawson actually wins. Ooh, strong point. So is, I mean, does that mean that Robes is Dawson's Janetti? I'm not going to go that far. I'm in the new breed. Well, I'm just again. saying if Robes swerves Dawson, Dawson ain't the Janetti because he wins. Will he win in those matches? Dawson has the history of winning right now. He might be the only one in the new breed, new breed who have it. Uh, Rez has had some championships. Oh, blood sports don't count. You win them and you lose them. They're like That's Tic true. Tacs. <laughs> it's like Tic Tacs. Gino, you made it back. I was done swerving my bladder. <laughs> Hold it. Saw it coming. Did you see this coming? <laughs> right. Let's go. Oh, 
best swerve of the decade. I didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that coming. Nope. I, nope. All right. So, hey, as we wrap up real quick, um, five swerves that you would do today in Federation X. Karen Crow swerves the uh, Society of Serious Wrestlers. Okay, good one. Nobody would see that shit coming. Right. <laughs> I'm oh, hard. Oh, wait a minute. I can't count on him to comment. Um, <laughs> let's say, uh, again, I would see Cole Styles swerving person peoples because bro's got a shitty name. Okay. I mean, I mean, honestly, he hasn't really done anything to help bro out. He's not the best tag team partner, but he is my tag team partner. He right is now. your team. Well, you know, some chemistries uh, stick around. I don't know about that. Like, I'm not against it. If he swerved me, I wouldn't be surprised by it. I just don't know if the swerve is cool. So I have considered if it's possible to play a bro who's the heel. And I think there's some irony that you could really tap into. Oh, so much. Right. So much. Um, okay, here's one that we let no one would see coming. Athelia swerving her brother. I mean, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? She's gonna marry a genocide character. Isn't that the swerve already? Oh, so it's already happening. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. No, no. I Tim thinks it's it's person people swerving coal. I suspect the same thing. All right. So Wait a minute. hang on. Go ahead. Here's one for you. We're gonna add a Tony Robes' lose, lose streak with my last swerve. Who's he who's he hanging out with now? Tony Robes gets swerved by his own ass. Yeah. Is it Tori that he's hanging out with? Apparently the one with the better tits. I don't know which one it is. See, I thought you were gonna say Dave. <laughs> Dave so, Swerves Tony. There we go. I uh, would love that. I would Good love swerve. to see Dave Swerve Tony. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, what do I'm you got gonna, for us, Mav? I'm going to be hard-pressed to come up. I, did you just call me my brother's name? Yeah, man. No, don't you do that. You took your glasses off. Night. That's what you get. Oh, oh my God. Wait, sorry. I got to get back in here. Oh, Storm, you're back. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, um, I, I, I think I would be hard-pressed to come up with five simply because, again, I'm trying to play catch-up. But, and, I, I, and, I, and again, keeping in mind that I don't know how active the other members are per se because I'm still trying to catch up. But I think it would be interesting with all this talk about the new breed is if the rest of the new breed ganged up on Dawson and Ted Rose and threw them both out. Ooh. Nice move. I mean, I like if you're – I mean, you're, I think from what I've read, it's pretty established that Dawson and Robes lead that group. Right. Well, that means everybody else behind you, as much as nobody wants to admit it, you're kind of an underling. So how do you make a name for yourself? By by deep six and the two guys in charge. Right. So I, And I don't think anybody would see that coming. Yep. I'd also like to see Fantastico swerve Dave. Oh, Turns yeah. out he's not dead. He just really stinks. <laughs> <He's just laughs> <up, laughs> really um, but uh, speaking on Dave's behalf, because I know him real well, that he he's too in love with Tony to. Yeah, I don't think he'd swerve him. He loves Tony. So yeah, that's but I, I, I would be hard pressed to think of anyone anything else because, like I said, I'm still trying to catch up. So, what if Tony swerves the sim and actually starts winning? <laughs> Seems unlikely. Oh, true. Yeah. Uh, so he, let me throw some ideas at you guys because I have some as well. Uh, what if Omega swerves everybody and joins the new breed? Uh uh. You won't see it because that already happened when Omega joined the program because of Reza. But this is the story, always, right? But we've already seen it happen. And well, well wait a have minute. These players three Ash breed. Have these players seen it happen? Right? Um, so 
reversing that because everybody's like, oh, Omega and Reza. Now, what if Carnage turns on Omega and joins the new breed? The old guard joins the new breed? Just Carnage. Literally the as, oldest motherfucker besides the Time Walker. As the world champion. Ooh. Right? So that's that's an idea out there. What if Lars swerves the power base and steps back in the ring? What if Mav swerves everybody and starts giving Tony wins left and right? Wait, um, Ma Mav's starting to hand out buy rounds? Don't forget, Mav still gets a paycheck. He may not be around, but he's still power based. True. Um, what if the Kansas kid swerves the boners because he really likes being a serious wrestler? <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> What if Jazz swerves the Kansas kid? He stops being able to jazz. Now, there's some, that's actually no, all right. Because of Kansas being Kansas, I'd love to see him write that of be, losing the ability to jazz, like swerving himself in that respect. Just because what? I can read his shit all day long. What if? The mystery wrestler who shows up next week turns out to be Benny and he has swerved the boner force in his return. He'll get bonered. He knows it. Will he? Because the boner force, if he's not in it, is who? You and Kansas, who's now serious. So it's just you. You got the profit. He can nah, he's an add on. He is the apprentice. You're right. And I still can't find Tony, Tony out Hoja. because he's a pair. Where the fuck are you, Hoj? Yeah, that would be a legitimate question. We would love Ooh. to see some Hoj. Hey, I got. What if Storm showed up and Max swerved the Prophet and they became a tag team? Aggravated assaults not technically doing anything right now. <laughs> I mean, what if the prophet swerved Mav so he could tag with Acid Ed? Oh, yeah, double but, swerve. <laughs> yeah, but the, in that case, the prophet's swerving himself because he's choosing a semi active tag partner for someone who's going to disappear in about a week. I mean, I think Ed will last longer than you. Seems fair. Oh, that's that sounds like fighting words. And that's all right. Ed's already disappeared twice already. I mean, you say disappeared. I said waited for a challenge. Yeah, he's still stuck at the LC. We know. He's just sitting around like, is there anybody worth punching in the face? Any Diggsy's dead. What's next? Dane Bramage. Um. All right, so we, we knocked out a couple that we would do. Before we go, any last thoughts on swerves, guys? Anything you want to say that we didn't touch on already? Are there any swerves being mentioned in the chat that are worth even talking about? I mean, Miller's whining about us swerving them off the podcast. That's great. <laughs> there, there's your x pac heat for the night. Right, I, but I, I, is it really a swerve? I've done it before. And he I was going to say, he should have seen that coming. Right. Especially because when I sent, uh, did anybody actually read my notes? It said, at some point, I'm going to kick Miller out. No, because I didn't get the fucking notes till about, oh, wait a minute, 20 minutes into the podcast. They were in the group that I did not invite you to. So, the, really, the swerve of the night is Tim actually letting me in. I mean, a little bit. The joke was funnier when you were on there going, you have to give it to me somewhere I can get to it. And I was like, what is the problem? Just go on Discord. This thing was fucking dead. And then I log into Discord. I'm going, there's nothing here. Uh, Brendan continues to remind us that the great Australia swerve uh, should not be forgotten. He, then he said, swerve the planet. Is it a swerve if it's not against a player? It is. In fact, all of America swerved the good guys. I don't know what to tell you. 
the good guys should have swerved America first. Yep. That's not what they do. They're the good guys. Yes, that's why they should have done it. You don't talk about the face swerve. They dropped the ball on that one. The face's job is to encourage the heel to be a better person. That's what they were doing, and America turned on them. Sounds legit. Yeah. I'm a little Trust too loaded I've, to... Uh, I've, I've practiced one. this one for ages. I'm familiar with it. It's how I see it would go if I was in politics. I just want what's right for you. Kill him. <laughs> Brendan's apparently upset that we fed puppies to crocodiles. Hey, crocodiles have to eat too. What's with your hatred of lizards, Brendan? Yeah, right. What is with your hatred of lizards? Bad dietary farmers. needs must be met. Yeah. All right. Any any last thoughts on swerves before we go, guys? Am I allowed to do them again? I will approve future swerves. Huge. Okay, future. That's indefinite enough for me. They got to be really, good. Don't oh give me God. any half-ass swerves. Give me something that really matters. I haven't been able to do my favorite thing for like 13 fucking years. Yeah. I do like, I do like every time Miller says, we're not baby faces, we're adult faces. I'm super entertained. I know adult that you guys species are more like it. Storm, Sorry. who will you swerve next? Everybody wants to know. I, I have to come back first, um, which I still don't, you know. He's not wrong. So, Japan? Maybe. I Wait, mean, if he's going to come back, he has to swerve faith to do so. No, no, no. I've already swerved, I've already swerved the wife once. That didn't end well. Don't forget. I mean... She carries an axe, okay? Right. So, you know. Hey, at, at, at least she didn't carry a kid. <laughs> no, right, actually. A actually, there was. Wow, I haven't thought about this in years, dude. There's your swerve. The faith child. Remember that? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I do. <laughs> There's a niece. A whole separate conversation, guys. Whole separate conversation. The bloodline's coming back. There's the swerve. Yeah. My thanks to Genocide Jason Miller, who could not stay with us long enough. Jason <laughs> Storm. Max Entropy, who was incapable of joining us on schedule. And unfortunately, Royal Ryan Scott has refused to come on once again, although we continue to put out the invitation. He what swerved us again. We will talk to everybody next time and get ready the Fantasy Federation X draft is coming. I cannot wait. We'll talk to everybody next time.